Very shortly, we'll be introducing the Hammer Throwers. We have 11 women competing in the Hammer competition today. So on top eight, we'll get six throws. So all, three, all 11 athletes will get the throw in the first three rounds, and then the top eight will advance to rounds of four to six. Again, log on to parkcitysports.ie, and you'll be able to keep an eye on how the event is progressing there. There's a live link, so you can see the results appearing. So we're using electronic distance measurement today at the Hammer, so you can see the yellow tripod next to the Hammer cage. So that's used there for electronic distance measurement, and the measurement you can see at the screen, that will be the distance they're throwing. So the, champion, the, the record from the Park City Sports of this event is just over 71 metres, so some of the athletes taking part in this event have PBs this year far in excess of that event, or that distance, so hopefully we'll see a new record at that event. Other field events we have today, we have the men's shot put, we have the women's high jump, and the men's long jump, and the men's pole vault. They'll all be getting underway later on in the evening, so it's a very exciting evening on the field, and no doubt we'll have more excitement on the track. The track events begin at 6 o'clock with the firm relay. So our first show's event this evening will be the Cork County Council Women's Hammer Competition. We have 10 competitors taking part in the event. So when I call out their name, they'll step forward and wave their hands in the air. So representing Tala and Ireland. So Hayden. So silver medalist at the National Championships. Representing Swinford and Ireland. Michaela Walsh, four times national champion for the Hammer. And a double champion at the National Championships. That two weekends ago, winning the hammer and the shot put. So representing Great Britain, Kayleigh Presswell has a personal best of 65 metres, 11 centimetres. So representing Lithuania, Agna, Lucas, Desdivaita, three times national champion and national record holder for Lithuania. So from Finland, Kyra Bannanen, 21-1 bronze medalist at European Under-23 Championships. So representing Slovakia, Veronica Kanuchkova, the national champion of the Slovak Championship in the UEFA goals. So representing Great Britain, Casey Head, bronze medalist at the UK Championships. So, so representing Finland, Zubi Kostainen, has a personal best of 70 metres, 39 centimetres, a distance from Zubi this year. Also representing Finland, Finland, we have Sara Kilinen. Has a personal best of 71 meters and 2 centimeters. And finally, we have Catherine K. Jameson of Denmark. So three times national champion. Has a personal best of 74 22, and that's a Danish national record. So that's the fourth county council women's hammer competition. So just about to start.
Good evening and welcome to Bishopstown. We are here in Cork for the BAM Cork City Sports. I'm Cahal Dennehy. I'm delighted to say that I'm joined once again by Jared O'Donnell alongside me. And Jared, the weather gods are smiling down on us this evening. Yeah, absolutely. A scorcher here down in Cork at the minute at MTU campus, formerly Cork IT. Um, the track is looking glorious. The weather is, as you said, the sun is shining. The wind is favorable for the sprint so far. Hopefully it holds up that way. but. Absolutely, it is looking like a cracking evening ahead as you see the timetable on screen here for this. Bam, Cork City Sports starting off with that. Uh, the field events are kicking things off here at the Women's Hammer and the pole vault getting underway very, very shortly. But then it's going to be an action packed night of track action here. Uh, and like we said, sun shining. Let's see what the times on the clock will say. Hopefully, some big performances for athletes heading off to World Championships, Commonwealth Games, and then on to European Championships this summer. There are a galaxy of stars out long before sunset here at the MTU Athletic Stadium. Both national and international, some of Ireland's best are here. We're really looking forward to seeing the likes of Sarah Lavin, Dara McElhenney, so many others in action here tonight. Cahill Doyle, the national 1500 metre champion, he'll be coming up just after 9 o'clock against an international field in the men's mile. You'll see the second half of the programme there, or it's not quite the entirety of the programme, but some really good highlights to look forward to there. We have former world bronze medalist from South Africa in the men's 200 metres. In the 3,000 metres, can Dara McElhinney go after the great Craig Mottram's meeting record at the Cork City Sports? 17 years old it is now, 7.38 is what Craig Mottram ran. Um, I remember that, that day down at the Mardike, blustery day. And that will, the Johnson Controls one mile will wrap up the action at 9 o'clock, as it was at the Morton Games a few days ago. A magic mile will finish things off on the stroke at 9 p.m. They'll be setting off. It's quite breezy here at the moment. You'll probably see in your shot there, there's a few distant flags and they're billowing quite strongly, but just looking around the track, trying to get a gauge on which direction the wind is blowing. Um, it's not too windy anyway. And certainly, Jer, whether you're a sprinter, a distance runner, a pole vaulter, or a hammer thrower, you're going to be a lot happier coming here tonight than perhaps some of the recent Irish athletics meetings and the, the way the weather has not exactly shone on them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's sun is shining, as you said. So looks great down here in Cork at the minute. Hopefully it'll hold up for the rest of the evening. It's still early days yet, but we've got blue skies in front of us. We just see that pole vault lineup is on screen. It's a, an all domestic field for that one with national champion from this year, Una Bryce, local athlete of Leave LAC, um, the top entrant in that one. And She's got her work cut out for her with last year's silver medalist in that one too. So it's a it's an all-Irish field in that women's uh, pole vault kicking off the field event action and kicking off this uh, 69th BAM Cork City Sports here from MTU in Cork. They're heading towards the 100. And we have also hammer throw action ongoing at the moment. We have a great hammer throw women's competition, or field anyway. We won't, we won't call it a competition yet. We'll see how good it actually is once they get going but that's ongoing as well. They've just got underway at 5.30. And we'll do our best, and all the camera gurus here standing around the stadium, we'll do our best to bring you as much action as possible tonight, whether track or field. And that Cork County Council women's hammer is also underway, and there's some quality athletes in there. Catherine Jacobson of Denmark, 74.22, she threw. Um, a national record for Denmark there just a few weeks ago, 23-year-old star. Hammer doesn't get the, the most attention a lot of times, but certainly it's a wonderful privilege to have Catherine Jacobson here at the Cork City Sports, the BAM Cork City Sports. 
going to be one to look forward to. The first track action, by the way, if you're curious, is going to be coming up. I think it's just at 6 o'clock, Chair. We've got a few team relays, mm. and we'll be having a bit of fun with those. Absolutely. We had some fun at the Morton Games on uh, Saturday evening with the 16 by 100 meter juvenile relay in particular. Um, so we'll see something similar from a couple of novelty relays here coming up very shortly. Uh, They're not the novelty to the athletes, though. Certainly They're serious not. business. There'll be some severe bragging rights going on in the offices tomorrow afternoon and onwards amongst various companies. And they realise just how hard it is to run on the track. Just see some more opening heights on the pole vault there. Our full uh, lineup in that pole vault competition. And we have, as I said, Una Bryce, Claude Walsh, last year's national champion, second this year, uh, just a week and a half ago there at the... National Championships in Morton Stadium, the bar at 255 there, as you can see, that is Jody McGrath um, there of Nina Olympic, um, Sorka Kilgallen, also in this one, Lucy Healy and Maeve Corkery uh, of Middleton AC. This should be Sorka Kilgallen of Yall up next. If all athletes are taking this opening height, I'd imagine uh, Una Bryce and Clodagh Walsh are chilling out just as of yet, probably still in their gear and waiting to... Oh, come in at a, at a higher height two athletes who've cleared 370 and 380 in the past Jody McGrath with a best of 3 metres yeah, no better platform for Una Bryce to push things higher than in her home city I'm sure she'll have plenty of fans dotted around this arena and it is a beautiful track and those, those trees down the end there really do provide a, a brilliant buffer and hopefully that will uh, lead to some fast times here this evening we've obviously seen some wickedly fast times Phil Healy's 200 metres from a few years ago stands out here. Yeah, Marcus Lawler's on the same night, uh, 2040 here, so that's his personal best. And that uh, men's 200 will have two Irish Olympians in it with Leon Reid going in the race one and Marcus in race two, centre of the field. Phil Healy, like I said, first woman to break the 23 second bar in the 200 here, setting that national record 22.99 a couple of years ago, since being usurped on the record books by Rashid Adeleke. But Phil going in the 400 here. New specialty event, I suppose you could call it. She still is the 100 metre national record holder at 11.28 from uh, Morton Stadium a couple of years ago at the graded meet up there. But she'll be here to do a lap of honour around her home track here later on this evening, so it'll be great to see. Indeed, we shall see how long that 100 metre national record stands with the likes of Rashida Adelecki threatening it, you'd have to say. Um, but Rashida, of course, is uh, targeting the 400 metres at the upcoming World Championships. A lot of the Irish team have actually just flown off today, getting over to the West Coast in Oregon to get themselves acclimatised. Friday week, the biggest dance of the year in the athletics world will be going down in Eugene, Oregon. We'll be seeing some of the athletes, many of the athletes, in fact, tonight. Some of the Irish team even. Sarah Lavin will be heading over there. So we'll be very much looking forward to that. So it'll be on the field, it'll be the Hammers, Hammer and pole vault ongoing, and then at 7 pm, we'll just have the Athletics Ireland men's pole vault, women's high jump, and then we'll have men's long jump, and then a great men's shot butt competition. I think we've got Jody McGrath back on the pole vault runway here at that 255, second attempt, and she goes clear. So it carries on. Oh, sorry, that was Barra's up to 270 now, so it's her first time clearance for Jody at that height, the Nina Olympic athlete. We're just well, warming up ourselves here, Jer. Absolutely, yeah. Checking the eyes. It's, it's it takes a while to get into this. Sometimes it can be very tricky to see what the, uh, the field event boards are saying. It can be one official shy of someone to just rotate the board towards the crowd, but thankfully here in Cork, of course, they're on the ball and everything is run to precision. Um, so you can see that that bar is set at 270. Yeah. And if you're looking like to follow the live results tonight, you will find the link on the Cork City Sports website. The the URL is results.munsterathletics.com forward slash Cork City Sports 2022 forward slash menu.html. Simple as that. Easy. You remembered that. You got all that. You did. But anyway, you will find it there. Sorka Kigallan now on the runway of the pole vault for 270. And she goes clear too. White flag from the official. So another clearance there in that women's pole vault. Sorka to Gallon, first attempt. Yeah, like Colin said, to follow those live results. You can get on get on the Cork City Sports website and you get some of the event previews. See who's going to be here this evening. Some of the exciting matches matchups we're going to see later on in this program. And like we said, the sun is absolutely beaming down here. It might be hard to see on the camera with the shadows and the sun nearly too bright for the cameras to pick up some of it. But uh, yeah, the weather is glorious at the minute. And we were promised some tailwinds for the sprinters, so they'll be happy out with that. Hard to catch a, a reading on the flags, Joe. 
Not many flags here. I can see a plus 1.3 on the uh, in infield wind uh, reading at the minute, but not sure when that button was pressed. But certainly uh, a plus 1.3. All the sprinters heading into the warm-ups would be happy out to see that. Sarah Lavin will be quite delighted about that, as indeed all the sprint hurdlers will, I'm sure. Yeah, Cracking 100-metre hurdles coming Just up later on. Back on the pole vault, 285 is another clearance there for, Claude, or for Jody McGrath of Neon Olympic. Safely clear at first attempt of that one. Myself and Sorkin Kilgallen are the first two in this women's pole vault, so clear heights on the board, as you mentioned, on the high jump a couple of days ago, Carl Field event uh, markings there goes back off. Number of number of heights knocked or, or failed uh, rather than the previous count back, which was the most recent to the highest height, so the highest height you knocked, but into the hammer circle here, Carl. Tell us a little bit of our lineup in this one. Yeah, this is we'll start with this athlete. This is Sarah Kilinen of Finland. She was fourth at the NCAA Championships. She's a student at Virginia Tech and that sailed a long way. I'm not going to guess how far that sailed but it was uh, let's see where the official plunks that measurement. Yeah, it's not. It's not her best. She has thrown 71.02 and as you can see that is shy of the 60 meter line but she has thrown some big, big distances the 21 year old. One of two well, three actually very talented Finnish athletes in this field. And we know they love their throws in Finland. So, whether in Helsinki or Tampere or Turku, thank you for tuning in tonight. And hello to any viewers tuning in from there to catch a glimpse of, I was going to say the next generation, but they're really the current generation of very strong Finnish throwers coming out. Sara Kilinen has thrown 71.02 this year. Her compatriot Suvi Koskinen has thrown over 70 metres as well, 70.39 in May. And then they are joined by Kira Vainainen, who has thrown 66.99 this year. Three very strong Finnish throwers. So we'll see what they can manage. And of course, on this the Irish side of things, Carl Michaela Walsh, their double national champion, hammer and shot put, as she has been many, many times, still a very young athlete, 64.57 at her best. So she'll be trying to get back up towards those Finnish athletes, as well as uh, probably the event favourite, Catherine Jacobson. Yeah, and this is Suvi Kuskinen. That will not be counted. Next into the circle, it's going to be Katie Head of Great Britain, 22 year old. She was third recently at their national championships, a student at Brunel University. One of the Newham and Essex Beagles. She has thrown 69 72 this year. Not that we're experts on the hammer, but anyone interested in throwing will know that 70 meters for a woman is really truly international class standard it is the benchmark we see that throw from katie head sails out towards looks beyond 65 meters so perhaps that could take the lead um, the first thrower who we were just focusing on the pole vault at the start who we missed is katherine jacobson from denmark but we will i'm sure catch up with her in the second round and see what she has done because she is a very very gifted athlete 23 year old from denmark European under 23 silver medalist a few years ago. This is Veronika Kanuchova of Slovakia. She has thrown 69.48 at her best. Not quite up to that this year. 67.23 is her best this year. She's a two time Slovakian champion. 29 year old. In this Cork County Council women's hammer into the circle, she comes for her first throw. And out it goes. It looks well beyond 60 meters, but. We've got a red flag there, I think, on that one. Well, the official it doesn't matter what she threw. Yes, just behind the net. Get um, a foul. I just heard the infield commentator talking about how they need to. Uh, or the left handed, right handed throwers will be thrown the direction as you've seen there, but the left handers will be thrown more towards the back straight, so they just switch the side of the cage, closes in a little bit. Um, but. From an Irish perspective, I suppose, Carl, back on the hammer throw, we obviously had Eileen O'Keefe, our national record holder, was a, a superb international athlete in her best of 73.21. When you think of Catherine Jacobson has thrown 74.22, even better than that. Eileen O'Keefe, you know, top top seven in the world with that performance. Um, it's a real world-class hammer that, competition we have and here. that is a very big throw there from Kira Veinanen of Finland. 66.99, her personal best. So, obviously, you'll have to... Imagine the arc there of that 65 meter line, but you can see it's it's out towards that for sure. Um, she doesn't look too happy walking out of that circle, so perhaps she'll be looking for a bit more than that. In Next into the circle, it is from Lithuania, 
Agne Luko Vichuti. She's a best of 66.09. Can she get close to that here on her opening effort? We're still a little bit away from our first track action. 25, 20 minutes or so. Yeah, just under 20 minutes now. And the field of enters take the spotlight until then. That goes well outside the circle. There's a good few officials sitting at a table there in... Uh, wasn't a million miles away from them, but obviously the, they've factored all that in. Katie Presswell now heading into the oh, that summer the, circle. Is that the World Under 20 Championships year a few years ago? As we see, Kelly Presswell, yes, 65 meters her best. The World Under 20 Championships and a guy threw up into the air and came out the circle. And the official who was sitting at the table uh, recording the marks he went straight through the table and broke his foot. Oh. They drive an ambulance out to get him, but he was all right, but a broken foot. It is a dangerous event to hammer if it can go wrong, but obviously. So often it's held outside the main arena for such reasons, but once the specifications are all up to scratch, then things are being done with adequate health and safety. So it's um, all going off very well here. Yeah, and it's great to see the, the hammer throwers taking centre stage here at the MTU Athletic Stadium. Yeah, absolutely, as I said, with Eileen O'Keefe, we've seen her uh, compete at the national championships a couple of times back in the mid early 2000s, where it uh, was held in stadium. And it's just a real spectacle to see because you don't get to see it that often. As I said, it's often to be uh, outside the main stadium in a throw sector like it is in, in Santry now. Um, but here is Michaela Walsh. To be able to see it in person is, is a real. It's a showpiece event, so it looks like towards the high 50s for Michaela. I think 59 is her best this year so far, so she be hoping to get out towards the, the 60s, 64, 57, her best. Uh, you know, top 10 and top 10 in the World Junior Championships caught in the past in both the shot and the hammer throw. So. Indeed, and third at the European under 20s. Super, super talented Back in 2017. Athlete. Margaret Hayden in here now. 54, 30, her PB. Tala AC kit. Uh, she launches it out towards that 60 meter mark. That looks like a, a very good throw, possibly a PB there for Margaret Hayden. We'll just have a look and see. We got a white flag anyway for sure. So that could be, from my eyes here, it looks like a very, very good throw and certainly a, a very solid opening throw to get our competition underway. This Cork City Council women's hammer throw at the BAM Cork City Sports. Women's pole vault is still underway on the opposite end of the track here. The bar is up to around three metres now, I think. And here comes Catherine Jacobsen, who we spoke about a lot earlier, the 23-year-old Danish star into the circle for what will be her second attempt. She's a five-time Danish champion at the age of just 23 and a 74-metre thrower. She will be going to the World Championships in Oregon next week where her goal is to make the final and how far can she fling this it looks a big one you can see that has definitely sailed beyond the 65 meter line well beyond the 65 meter line we'll try to get confirmation on that we are we are gazing across and trying to spot the scoreboard um, but we're not sure if it's uh, visible or from our current position but that looks a big throw from Catherine Jacobson Denmark the Sparta Athletic Athlete. Yes, yeah, so she is first in throwing order here by virtue of that huge PB of hers. Yeah, and it was through the first round, it was Katie Head of Britain who was leading with 63.86, and it was Catherine Jacobson opened with 61.27, but in our very inexperienced, unofficial eye, it looks like she's certainly taken the lead there with a white flag in her second attempt as we see Sarah Keelan in. But it's certainly not a throw she will w even want to get measured there, landing down around the 40 meter line. It's one to forget for her. Onto the third round, and we'll give you the official throw from Catherine Jacobson as soon as we have it. And as we said, if you are keenly following these throws, um, get on to Cork City Sports website and you can get the live results link in there for yourself. They'll be updated with each round. And you'll have them quicker than we do. Yeah, that's another big throw from Sylvie Koskinen. 
she fouled her first attempt but as we said a 70 meter thrower back in May third at the World University Championships back in 2016 the 25 year old Suvi Koskinen and as you can see that looks around the 66 meter mark so this hammer competition is really heating up and the crowd being treated to an excellent display of throwing here in comes Katie Head of Great Britain into the circle she threw 63.86, took the lead in that first round, but I can tell you that's been deposed, and that looks a big one. Be again, beyond 65 metres again, and the throw from Catherine Jacobson in the first round, or the second round, was 66.02 to take the lead. Sarah Killinen fouled, and we'll, we'll await as the scores go in from the recent round, but Katie Head gets the white flag there, and she is certainly, that's her biggest throw. Suvi Koskinen in the last with the last ever through 66 36 so she took the lead by just 34 centimeters a foot or so ahead of the favorite Catherine Jacobson but again Katie Head has really thrown her hat in the ring as well with that effort beyond the 65 meters so we're probably going to have three athletes here in around 66 meters through the first few minutes really of this competition so this is Veronica Kanuchova yeah, Slovakia in a foul in the first round, so see if she get the white flag on this one, she does. So it looks to be just up beyond the 60 meter mark as well, 62, 63 perhaps. I can tell you Margaret, um, Margaret Hayden, uh, the second Irish woman in this competition, got a clean throw in 53.06, she's probably closest so far to her PB um, of anyone in the field at 54.30. Hopefully be under threat in the next couple of rounds. As we just see uh, Kira Vinanen of Finland, the third fan in this competition getting ready to take her second round throw. A foul in, oh, 63-25, sorry, in round one. So she sits uh, in fourth place at the minute, trying to push herself up the field with this one. Keep an eye on the judges here too. We have the white flag. That's certainly a better, it looks like a much better effort than previous, so. That looks like out towards 66 meters, so her PB is, um, 66.99 so could be under threat with that one the officials scampering out a little bit further down the field than they were expecting to Agna Lucas Skiv Kajce in next of Lithuania 66.09 at her best just wait to see the updated scoreboard of that previous so 65.50 it was for Vinanen of Finland so a big improvement there doesn't change her position. That looks like she got a white flag there, all right, but maybe outside the sector. You see the judge going over. Now looks clean, but won't be near her best in that round, second round effort. Just lost the grip on the hammer. Next in with Kaylee Presswell. Back over to the women's pole vault. Bar is now up to 3.15, and that's Jody McGrath, Nina Olympic. Getting the uh, liquid chalk onto her hands, get that grip. As we said, the weather is it's very balmy here down at Cork at the minute. There's a slight breeze blowing. There's a plus 1.1 there on the clock. You can see our technical official, Andrew Lynham, is just checking that wind gauge on the infield. But for the pole vaulters, that means it's a crosswind. Um, and as if you ever watch any of the international meets, you'll see them looking up to the stand, waiting for their coach to confirm whether they should go or not. As we see, Jordy McGrath going down the runway. This will be a PB if she clears it, and it's a failure this time. That is her third, of, third attempt at 3.15. So her competition ends. She gets a round of applause from the crowd on the hill here in MTU in Cork. That'll be the end of her Cork City Sports for this year. Claude Walsh and Una Bryce still in the competition. There are two women who have gone well clear of three metres in the past. 370 for Bryce, or 380 for Bryce and 370 for Claude Walsh. You know, Bryce, national champion, she was senior champion at 18 years of age. And just seven or eight days ago in Morton Stadium, she is the national uh, under 18 record holder for the pole vault as well. So she's gone on to bigger and better things. And let's see how high she can go this evening. See, is that cross with any effect on them? The, the wind gauge just stopped there again at a plus 0.8. And now again, just the plus 1.0. So all the tech checks are being made, and uh, it looks pretty good. As we 
see Claude Walsh there of Abbey Striders on the pole vault runway. It's pretty much perfect pole vault conditions. It's nice and warm, especially once you've gone through your warm up. You wouldn't really, uh, for an Irish person anyway, wouldn't want it any warmer. There's a bit of a breeze, which pole vaulters, of course, hate but nothing too strong as we see a brilliant clearance there from Claude Walsh over with a lot of room to spare. The Abby Strider over 3.30 on her first attempt. I'm sure she'll be taking aim at her personal best of 3.70 at some point this evening. Bryce is back on the runway, the local star, the Lee Vale athlete, 380 her best, and she'll be, Barra's now up to 340, so this is getting to the, the more difficult, the more dangerous heights, Kenuna Bryce, the teenager, look at that, perfect clearance, excellent technique, and again over with lots of room to spare, Kenuna Bryce should, we don't want to curse her down here but commentators curse but she should be going a lot higher than 340 tonight because that looked a, a facile clearance for the young Leavale star yeah both herself and uh, Claude Walsh are very uh, closely matched uh, two young athletes will be going head to head on this one as you said 340 they'll be able to decide how high they want to go up uh, and the increments they want to challenge I'm sure they'll be going for PBs so this weather holds up, it's going to be a perfect night for it. Good competition here at MTU at the BAM Cork City Sports. It is Abby Strider's Claude of Walsh there, just getting poles ready for the next round, next attempt. And just, just to update you on what's happening in the hammer through into the third round now, it is Catherine Jacobson who is in second place actually at the moment, 66.02, and still being led by Suvi Koskinen of Finland with 66.36. And Jacobson has fouled her third attempt. So Jacobson under a bit of pressure at the moment, but she'll certainly be into that top eight to get another three throws as we see Una Bryce. And that's not Una Bryce, that is in fact Claude Walsh back with for her first attempt at 3.40. Then there were two. And we'll be flicking back and forth between the hammer and the pole vault in the coming minutes. And we'll also have a team relay coming up on track before long. Which is always a bit of a laugh. You know, they're not going to take it too seriously. We're not going to take it too seriously, but... It's a bit of fun to get things started here. Claude Walsh is getting ready for this attempt. She hits the runway. Pole aloft. And it's a failure on this attempt for Claude Walsh. Gets the red flag. I think she knew once that pole was planted something was not quite right. Because it was a very much aborted mission before she really got much height under her. Yeah, that was her first attempt at 340 seeing her compatriot Una Bryce go clear so that's advantage Bryce at this early stage at the early heights uh, for these two talented athletes back in the hammer circle this here this is Veronika Kenukova of Slovakia as we said 69 meters her best that is looks around the 60 meter mark under the 60 meter mark so will be nothing for her to write home about given her previous standard Kenukova currently through 60-42 was her best indeed that is a foul her third attempt we've had six fouls so far in the third round can someone get a mark on the board Let's see if Kira Vainanen can do it out that goes great height on that throw it's past 65 meters and it's well past 65 meters she gets the white flag so we will have 
A mark on the board in the third round, which has been so far cursed. Kira Vanenen is so far in fourth place with her best of 65-50 in that second round. Let's see if she can improve that. I think certainly the angle we're sitting at here is uh, much worse than the screen in front of us to gauge the judgments on those throws, but it looks something similar to what she threw uh, in that first round of 65-50, so wait and see, is there any improvement on that one? Up next into the circle, that should be uh, Agna Lukas Kvitsche, Lithuania. Lukas Kvitsche uh, gets the white flag. With apologies to anyone in Vilnius Absolutely. watching on. There's no way I'm going to get that name right by the end of the evening. We'll try it. We'll Maybe once. We'll, we'll try. keep trying. We'll do our best. She's thrown 66.09 at her best. Her best tonight so far was in the second round, 55.40. So that's certainly an improvement on that. Yeah, she's got another seven or eight meters on that one at least. Throws her hat into the ring. You see a great crowd here in the stands. Speaking of hats, call. I was just about to mention that that uh, officials' luminous hat is a very easy gauge for us to find where the hammer has gone. Sometimes you lose sight of it. That uh, a luminous beacon of a hat. We can keep an eye on where the, the mark is being measured. As we see this relay about to get underway here, Carl. Yeah. Give us the, the lineup of the teams for it. First track action here. Not quite the uh, elite program, but we're getting yeah. underway with the Interfirm. LGFA relay for women. Yeah, it's going to be four by 200 meters, and in lane one, it's sorry, lane two, it's going to be. Well, we've had a rejig from the official order, so this could be a bit chaotic, but sure, we'll soon find out. But <laughs> the lineup we were given or that we had is Evening Echo in lane two, uh, Johnson Controls in lane three, Team Adidas Ladies in lane four, Passage West LGFA in five, Tremor Ladies in six, and Cove LGFA in seven. So just from my very rough gauge here, we do have even echo in lane one for sure. Team Adidas look to be out fifth out, so yes. I'd imagine that is lane five. We can only see this, the third leg runners here at the minute. And their bib numbers are not exactly helpfully for us relate not to their IDing their team, but to the order the leg they're actually running. Absolutely. So look, we're under a spot of duress here, but we're going to do our best as we come through this Interfirm LGFA relay, 4 by 200 metres. You normally only get this indoors, but I suppose it was added to the World Relays last year as well. It's an interesting event. Uh, it's kind of don't really know what changeover to do when you do a 4 by 200. Do you look? Do you not look? They'll probably look. I'm sure they will. They should go uh, taking in their left hand into the right if they've ever run in Nina, not too far from here. They'll be all used to the, the tight bends there. We've got a young versus not so young in these lineups as well. So it's a very interesting matchups here as we try and see who is out front, as I said. The uh, numbers on their chests are just related to the, the leg that they're running. So we'll try and gauge what team we're looking at here as they come down. I think that is Team Adidas. I think Team Adidas are in second, second. in the Luminous Vests. Um, <laughs> 60 seconds on the clock there, so 30 seconds splits for the first leg of the uh, Rio Team at the front panel. I'll just try and listen to the uh, infield announcer. might give me some interesting info here while you talk about what's happening on the track. Absolutely, yeah. It's gonna, it looks like it's going to be a dust-up for second at the moment. Evening Echo are bringing up the rear at the moment. Let's see if they get a report in tomorrow's newspaper as a result. But we're into the final change over here. And it is Katie Hennessy who's going to take this baton with a 40 to 50 meter advantage. And she is turning on the jets around that final bend. And you can see why they put Katie Hennessy as the anchor. But she is leaving them for dead here. Team Adidas ladies look to be holding on to second place at the moment. We'll see if she can maintain that. She looks like she will. Katie Hennessy, though, is bringing it home. Success by a street. Dips under the two minutes, 158. That is some swift running for 800 meters. And it is Team Adidas ladies in second. And then it is Tremor ladies in third. And then Evening Echo have come back from fifth to fourth. A brilliant finish from Evening Echo. And then it is Passage West LGFA at the back. So we think it's... I think we've got a subbed-in team here. We have a team that wasn't even on any start list. Mm. 
It was a team of ringers. Absolute ringers. Great island, we believe, we yeah. heard the commentator refer to them as. And great they were. Katie Hennessy storming them home, got the glory leg. All the work was done at that stage. She got to cheer her way down the home strip from the crowd. And celebrate home as the champions. Team Adidas are on the infield and they're celebrating wildly in those luminous kits. Happy out with their 4x2 performance. Great way to kick off the track action here at the BAM Cork City Sports. Yeah, the BAM Cork City Sports. And it is, lest we forget, the first ever World Athletics Continental Tour bronze meeting in Ireland. Absolutely. And it is great to see that, that World Athletics Tour being set up with the different levels. Self-explanatory, I suppose. Gold, silver and bronze are the three levels, the main levels. And you also have Challenger as well. And this is Ireland's only bronze level meeting. When did those uh, levels come in, Carl? Don't ask me questions about history of athletics, Chair. Sure. <laughs> I believe not, last uh, year. Yeah, I'd say it's not too hard to have the first one, but it's only in a year I can or two. certainly remember many of them last year. Yeah, there is May a have even been 2020. Cloda Walsh has gone clear there on her third attempt at 3.40, so she is still in the competition. Una Bryce will be up next when the bar goes up. They'll get to decide what they want to go up in. I'd imagine it'll be 10 or 15 centimetres on what they decide but great to see Clodagh Walsh still in contention two ladies left in at the Beeville AC local athlete as we said Una Bryce versus uh, Abby Strider's Clodagh Walsh so that PB of 380 she is the national record holder at the under 18 age group and she is the national senior champion as of uh, a weekend ago Kids today are winning Absolutely. national titles at the age of 18. Yeah, Wasn't like has, that in our day. The bar has gone up 10 centimetres to 350. Another kid who has won a couple of national titles now, two in a row, is a the men's 100 metres. He'll be coming up later on this evening. And what can he do in that one? We saw him storm his way to second place, another national under 23 record in Morton Stadium on Saturday at the Morton Games. And we and just Luna see Bryce. Bryce go. Oh, she was well clear of it. I'm not sure what has she knocked the bar. Uh, certainly had a, the hip height was well up there maybe just the uh, position of the price that needs to change if that crosswind is affecting her but definitely plenty more height there she'll have two more attempts at this one yeah her PB was set at this track back in late May 380 went over three, 366 indoors so it's a place she likes and that's a runway she knows well we've got one of the inter what do we call it again, Jer? Interfirms. Interfirm men's relay is going to be coming up next. We yeah, were due to have six teams, but there's there's only three of them have shown up. We're down to three, so it's going to be another uh, challenge for us to figure out who's who. Right. But we will do our best. It's going to be difficult, Jer. But, you know, the fun isn't trying. Due to have the Irish prison surface service versus Naval College versus Riverley Hotel, MTU, the Defence Forces and then Cork City Council but I think we've got uh, two teams of the same uh, kit. You see the ladies version getting their medals presented. It's Team Adidas. Adidas there will be smiling down saying go Adidas. Silver for the ladies of Team Adidas. Well done to them. Great battle for silver it was. It's a crowded podium. Sure is. Not as crowded as a 16 by 100 meter relay podium is. That's true. That was that was chaos. This is the right level of chaos. Exactly. That was too much chaos. Too much for old men, I guess. The weak hearts. There's some big promises being made here about the medal presenter running in 211 seconds. Rory. Impressive. Would be impressive. Unlikely. Ladies and gentlemen, can you show your appreciation one more time for our athletes in the Interfirm Ladies? Big Bula bus come from the crowd in the stand here from for this uh, the medalist in that relay. And just update you, Cloda Walsh just ran through her what was I think her first attempt? Yeah, first attempt at 350. She kind of put the pole in the little rectangular circle and then said no. No thanks, not this time. But she'll have two more attempts. And the hammer is ongoing. Katie Head still going well there in third place with 65-61. That was her fourth attempt. Michaela Walsh, the best Irish woman there as well. 59-12, her best so far. That was Katie Head. 
walking away and this is the favorite Catherine Jakobsen but she's in second at the moment and Catherine Jakobsen really is an outstanding athlete a former heptathlete and hurdler until about 2017 and she started focusing more on the hammer and she is qualified for the world championships and she will be going there next week I'm sure she's probably traveling there this week but she'll be competing the week after and she's aiming to get into that world final a biochemistry student at the University of Copenhagen she's improved 20 meters during the last two years seriously impressive stuff I haven't even improved 20 meters in my life throwing the hammer she's done it in two years but that goes way beyond 65 meters I think that may be there is a white flag so I think that will be our new lead yeah that's definitely out towards the 70 meter mark for sure 66 36 is the lead held by Sudi Koskinen at the moment but Catherine Jakobsen in that Sparta Athletic that's her club in Denmark yeah, certainly it's way out towards the 70 meter mark you know, judging off those 66 meter throws we saw earlier we have two teams I think in the inter-firm relay for men. River Lee Hotel is one of them. We know that much. And the Naval College up against them. In the singlets there, the Navy and White when you see them on screen, but we back to that hammer throw. Yes, yeah, Suvi Koskinen of Finland. The latest on that. She is in second place with 66.36, but indeed she's been overtaken, and that was a 68.07 throw from Catherine Jacobson. Outstanding stuff. She has seized command. She's close to two meters ahead at the moment. Can Suvi Kuskinen respond? And we're off in the interfirm relay, and there is serious bragging rights at stake here. I would say, Jared, the entire pride of the Naval College itself and that of the River Lee Hotel currently rests on these eight athletes who are out on track there, specifically these two athletes. Absolutely. Historically, the fiercest arrivals, you know, the Naval College and the River Lee Hotel. It goes back years and years, and this is all about the bragging rights. This is that first changeover. Naval College are in the lead, and a clean changeover from both. I think that guy in second took it with both hands, unusually. I've seen uh, better changeovers in my day. Yeah, Naval College starting to stride away, getting a bit of a gap now over the River Lee Hotel, and uh, into the home straight here, get the roar from the crowd as he comes down. Yeah, there's no lanes here at the moment. Well, the officials so just putting them into positions here as he breaks back into lane one. I'm not sure what lane he was running in, but the River Lee Hotel or the Naval College are away and clear. And that, was, that interesting that was, changeover that was, here. That was literally the worst changeover I've ever seen. One man but forgot I, you know to go. What? They didn't drop the baton and they're still out front. So who cares? But I'll, hopefully he's all right. He get, he'll be sore tomorrow. But it say, is. Uh, it's more important to keep the baton moving in, in a relay than it is for the, the athletes to move fast. But in that case, the baton came to a dead stop, as did our man handing it over. And then it started from a dead stop. That's yeah, certainly going to be one for uh, the highlight reel at the end of this competition. Yeah, we're trying to up a very super slow-mo replay. But it is the Naval College. They're above water today, that's for sure. And they are gushing to victory here from the River Lee Hotel. Although the River Lee Hotel anchor is certainly running at a fair lick. But there's no doubt about this. This is this is Sean O'Sullivan of the Naval College all day long putting on a PhD of sprinting here, coming up to the line. Bad changeovers can't stop the Naval College. Sean O'Sullivan, victory is his. 155 and it's second place. Well done to the Riverley Hotel. He looks like his calves or hamstrings and possibly everything else have cramped up there down the last 50. But he gets second place and he is laughing saying, Oh Lord, thankfully that was not any longer than 200 meters. But he, he did that the wrong way, Carl, I'm afraid. You were very impressed with his first 50 meters, but he should have saved that for the, the home straight to get his cheer home. Looked very impressive in the sunshine on the home straight, but good effort nonetheless. Yeah, well, even elites know, Jared, the 200 meters is not an all-out sprint. Naval College, the champs. Well will done the, to the Will Naval the College. Riverly Hotel ever recover from that one? I don't think they will. I think they're going to have to close down the whole hotel. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, back on the PUP for the lads. They're second, but they're also last. First losers, River Lee Hotel. Second winners? No such thing. It's open for debate, but the Naval College lads. 
your boys yeah. have handed out a hammering here today. PB though, PB for the lads, for sure. Personal best. Two or three ninety four. You know, they'd be happy enough with that. And I think, yeah, that 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 second changeover was one of the most upsetting things I've ever watched. They're all still walking, at least, so that's a good sign. Certainly. To update the hammer, because we are into the fifth round, and Catherine Jakobsen of Denmark, the favourite, is certainly in pole position at the moment. She's in the driver's seat, 68-07, that fourth round effort. She's yet to take her fifth attempt. Can she threaten the 70-metre barrier here at the MTU Athletic Stadium? 71-19, by the way, is the stadium or sorry to meet record and Cork City Sports has had some fantastic champion throwers show up to this meeting over the last 69 editions or 68 editions today is the 69th just there is Clodagh Walsh Clodagh Walsh is back on the pole button way and to another Walsh Michaela Walsh 58-78 in her 5th round she remains in 8th place at the moment in that women's hammer the leading Irish woman you know, good Michaela Walsh is a testament to the quality, the international quality that comes yet again to the BAM Cork City Sports. It continues to pr produce. See the presentation is ongoing for the, the Interfirm Relay. And Clodagh Walsh is back on the runway at 3.50. Yeah, her second attempt at 3.50. Unless we miss the second, but definitely, uh, definitely not her first. That interfirm relay is quite distracting. It is indeed. And here she goes, Clodagh Walsh. Ooh, and she goes clear. Brilliant clearance there. Very economical. Gives the bar a good rattle, but it stays on so far. So, still in it, Clodagh Walsh. Should be happy enough with that one. Go back and reassess and get ready for 360 coming up very shortly. So yeah, it was actually her final attempt here as well. Mm, so I think we probably missed one. So. Down to the final attempt, and she did that in the previous side too at 3.40, so she's a clutch performer, is Clodagh Walsh. Uh, yeah, we have a great showdown now with the barrel with next, I'm assuming, be going to 3.60. It's been going up in yeah. 10 centimeter increments. Yeah, it's up to 3.60 now on the scoreboard, so it'll be Una Bryce due up first, as we see. The Interferent Relay, sponsored by Echo, get their medals and plaque. The Naval College with the trophy. Riverdy Hotel taking second place. There's a lad there who could use his bit of the old arnica or anti inflammatories as well for that arm of his. He came down quite heavily on the inside rail <laughs> when he handed the baton over and literally ran into his teammate. But that's the beauty of this. Athletics is such a welcoming and opening open sport that anyone, just about anyone, can show up and participate, even here on the international stage at the World Athletics Continental Tour bronze level. The BAM Cork City Sports. Una Bryce on the runway. First attempt at 360, and she goes comfortably clear at that one. Happy days. No uh, no failures at this height for her like she did the previous, so she'll be happy to go clear there and she can chill out now and watch Clodagh Walsh try and match her. Yeah, it's really, really put the pressure now on Clodagh Walsh because Una Bryce has only one failure so far at 350. Clodagh Walsh has four, which means Clodagh Walsh essentially this height is only for her own competition in terms of beating Una Bryce. It'll mean nothing, but. She will need to go clear at 370 to be able to defeat Una Bryce, or a height higher, I should say, than 360. Maybe they'll go to. She's got to be a bit higher than her, yeah, correct. Most definitely. Um, Bryce has the 10 centimeters on her in terms of PB, but let's see what happens. We can see there's a there's flags down the bottom corner there. Our little flag was a billowing kind of diagonally across that pole vault, so we'll see how that's affecting them. But as I said, they can wait. Especially when it's down to two in a field event competition, they can take their time uh, in between each jump, get ready to go. So the Walsh is over chatting to her coach. But back on the track here for our first, uh, I suppose, main event of the, uh, the athletics program here, apart from those relays. First individual events, Cahill. Come all ye distance running fans, we have an open men's 3,000 metres to kick off the action here. Now, we have a elite level 3,000 metres coming up later on. And here is your lineup for the Cork Athletics 3000 meters open men's. This is more of a developmental race and Fionn Harrington, they are in order of their personal best. So the higher up you are on there, the faster you are at least on paper for now. We'll find out how fast they are on the track, but that's how fast they've been previously in their lifetime. Fionn Harrington is an 822 athlete. He was a European under 20 finalist last year. 
the Bandon AC athlete. He's now based generally stateside, went to Central Arkansas University for a year, but he's headed north next year, going to Loyola up in Chicago. He's transferring. So Fionn Harrington, great to see him back running well. He's run 8.30 this year, though. Not quite as fast as last year. All the athletes standing for the national anthem. And these athletes will be taking the doors off the hinges, Jer, in true GAA style at the end of the national anthem as the roars go up and the adrenaline starts surging. And the athletes will be very happy to see those flags sitting quietly. There's the second half of the lineup. In fact, that's only the second quarter of the lineup because we have 36 athletes ready to go to the line here in a 3,000 meters. So if you can find a bit of space on the track, well done to you. It's not going to be easy. But they range in quality from Fionn Harrington on personal best at the top with 8.22, down to Tommy Arthur of Ken Mayer with 9.35. We have a couple athletes in here, I think, on pacing duties as well. Well, Peter Hanrahan and John Durkin of Toker, the local club, uh, don't have personal best listed, but I suspect they might be being employed as pacemakers. We'll soon find out. But yeah, Fionn Harrington, there's plenty of quality in here. Lots of lots of strong up-and-coming young athletes. Fionn Harrington's only 19 years old, one of the youngest in the race, but the fastest. Keen Kelly is in there, 22-year-old from St. Abbans. He was sixth in the National 1500 this year. He is wearing bib, num bib number two. Stephen Fay is in there. He's the younger brother of Brian Fay, who was rocking it on the NCAA circuit, the Dubliner. And then Owen McElhenney, who is the older brother of Dara McElhenney, who will be in the elite 3,000 metres later on. Owen McElhenney is 24-year-old, sub-15 already this year for 5,000 metres over in Ordigam, 14.54. He's run 8.37 for 3K. And unlike younger brother Dara, he's stuck with the old club, Bantry. However, Dara, of course, is on a Ad Astra scholarship up in UCD. And as the, the terms dictate, you run for UCD while you're getting that scholarship during your collegiate years. UCD is also, of course, an Athletics Ireland club. So Dara will be, but I'm sure he'll be back in the blue of Bantry in a few years' time. Absolutely, as I said, family affair here with a, a huge field call. We were speaking about it at the weekend as well in uh, Morton Stadium about the size of the fields in these events. And in the mile, we saw three men go down. 42 of them didn't get back up again. Um, Paul Robinson. I mean, they did after the race. Well, they eventually that sounded got like back up. They passed away R. or something. RIP. Uh, they did recover eventually. But uh, yeah, Paul Robinson, a casualty of that one. And unfortunately, we won't get to see him here in the mile tonight. But hopefully, these men will be uh, nicely strung out from early on so they can get a bit of space to get their feet on the track. Yeah, we wish Paul some. Robinson a quick recovery. He just tweaked something in that fall the other night. So, with a lot more to come this summer, the Europeans aren't until late August, and he certainly staked a claim if he can hit the qualifying standard with that third place finish at Nationals. He could be in contention for a spot at the Europeans, so fingers crossed we'll see him back on the circuit before long. It's a hard knock life racing the mile. We'll see if anyone falls victim to it later on. Elbows need to be engaged around that first turn. Back on that hammer throw, quick update. Catherine Jacobson went out to 68.07 on that huge throw we saw. So, well into the lead, about a metre and a half clear um, of Suvi Koskainen with that 65 or 66.36 in her second round effort. And currently in third is Katie Head with 65.61. Michaela Walsh for the Irish, 59.12. And a PB for Margaret Hayden, 55.45. So, putting a, a good metre onto her previous best. So, great to see. Just wait it's for their great orders. to be able to enjoy some truly world-class hammer throwing and for them to be given the stage here at the MTU Athletic Stadium yeah they're into the final round there on that one as I said head on to the Cork City Sports uh, website you can find your live results link there go into the uh, event details yeah with a bit of a technical issues here there's a few gremlins in the system now that's Owen McElhenney there in the blue of Bantry, number four in front of you. And the lower your number here, it's kind of like golf, the better in terms of your personal best because it goes in that order. So if you see someone with number one or two, King Kelly there is the tall athlete towards the left. St. Adams man, A27, he's run. 22-year-old, we'll expect him surely to feature here as well. A 
much like when you're going into the um, the field event or into the um, multi events column. You get the the gold or a previous retain, returning returning champion gets the golden bib or the blue bib to say they're the returning champ or the current event leader. You've got the number one in your chest here. It's uh, the pressure is on. You've got to follow follow match your rank. So at least if uh, you have the front and back numbers when you're trotting along here in a 3k and you see a, a lower number than yours or a higher number than yours in front of you, you know you get, need to get your act together get up there and uh, I got neither a champion's bail nor a low number at any point back in the hammer is Catherine Jacobson for her fifth attempt I believe the favourite what can she produce as we said after the world championships it's a failure I suppose red flag into the netting just a slightly mistimed release we won't attempt a technical breakdown of what happened there because I'm sure Catherine Jacobson's coach or family may be watching from Denmark. And they would giggle at our attempts to Bryce, diagnose what happened. Peter Bryce just failing there at 375 on the first attempt in the women's pole vault. So this will be a PV for Claude Walsh if she can get over this. She'll be up next. She's just uh, strolling around with the liquid chalk in her hand getting ready to get her grip ready and get on the pole and take it from there. But Peter Bryce just has a chat with the official to see what may have went wrong for in that one. Those that got a closer look back into the hammer throw circle here. We have got number two, Sarah Kalinen. She's at 57.86. Is her best. Just one clean throw so far. She needed a big one. And the men's 3,000 metres is underway, Cahill. Cork Athletics I don't open 3,000 me meters. To say, Jer, about the 3,000 meters. Get excited immediately. I am please. stoked, and that's Keen Kelly gone to the front for the moment. This is going to be an absolute showdown ahead of his club mate William Fox. Has there been a deal arranged? I think so, Jer. Absolutely. The lads are going to want to run fast. That's for sure. They're not going to want to sit in here and just cruise around. There's very little bragging rights for winning this one. Yeah, we want quick we're times. Gonna, we're going to calm this down. We've got seven more laps to go. But that is number 17. That's the local lad Eric Curran of Leval, who appears to have gone for home seven laps out. Brave the St. Abbans men are very much on him at the moment, so we're thinking in and around 8.30 here, which is 68 pace, 68 a lap is 250 a kilometre, equals 8.30, easy, right, at least on paper, it's a little bit more difficult to do it in reality, um, especially with the wind that's gusting around here, but there's not too strong a wind, as I mentioned earlier, that large building to the right, the indoor facility here at the MTU campus and the line of trees around both bend or around that bend certainly provide a good bit of protection for these athletes especially for the 200 meters so we'll see how this plays out but an inspired local man we've seen this recently yeah Eric Curran there streaking away out front uh, maybe not want to leave himself too far away from the pack he's going to be chased down it's a beautiful uh, shot it is indeed. You can see Stephen Fay is starting to make a move up behind him as he, the golf buggy goes down the home straight here with the cameraman doing such a good job. Keeping that steady. I was reading about the JP McManus Pro Am in Limerick this morning, just to tell a quick aside. And the guy who was driving Tiger Woods to the tee, his golf buggy broke down because he drove it to the edge of a tee, and the GPS system shut it down because they weren't allowed to drive onto any tees. And then Tiger had to get out and walk to the tee, and he was not best pleased. Imagine having to walk as a pro golfer. Imagine having to be the guy who drove the buggy for Tiger Woods, and then you annoy Tiger Woods with the one job you had. You can always say he did it. So the but the Tiger Woods at this field at the moment, the GOAT through the first two laps is number 17, Eric Kern of Leva. Yeah, can Stephen, he hang on? Stephen Fay just closing the gap right up there. Realises you want more camera time, you need to be up to near the front. Keep the sponsors happy, Jer. Absolutely, yeah. DTC Dublin Track Club there, led by Phelan Kelly, and of course, a host of stars, and some of them heading off to the World Championships very soon as well, and more for the European Championships. But it is Eric Curran still leading the way out front here, the local man, the Lee Bell singlet, as the crowd are encouraged to give them a boola bust. Round of applause down the home straight. There's just a quick change of it's lead. It's Oshin Spillan there of Tralee Harriers, but he looks to be wearing the UL singlet to the lead. And he has now hit the front. Kilometer is covered in 2.52. So as we mentioned, looking like around an 8.30 race. Yeah, Frank O'Brien there of East Cork, you see in the uh, blue stripes, just making a move up as well on Eric Kern in towards second place. So yeah, the kingdom has come to the fore. 
through the first three laps here. So they'll be looking for about 3.25 or so here to hit that 8.30 pace. And fair play to Oshin Spillane because he sensed the pace slackening a bit and I'm sure he wants to run faster than his personal best of 8.42 and he has a great opportunity here to do it, the Trilly Harrier. And he's just carrying number 21. That is Frank O'Brien of East Cork away from this field at the moment. And Stephen Fade doing his best to hang on. Probably just needs to really put in a strong 200 meters here and try and close that. And he'll do himself a big favor. He can sit in then for a few laps. And it is Fionn. No, it's not Fionn Harrington. That is Keen Kelly of St. Abbans. Fionn Harrington doesn't look to be running here, but Keen Kelly of St. Abbans now moves around Stephen Fade. And he looks like he's going to try and take up the chase for the peloton. And we see number 18 there as well, Daryl Sullivan moving wide, showing more of an interest in that the lead part of that chase pack. And 1,500 metres gone and 1,500 metres to go. 4.15 or so on the clock, so we should be looking at a time in around 8.30. Only two men, Fionn Harrington, sorry, Fionn Harrington's not running, so only one man, Dean Kelly, had broken 8.30 before tonight. But it looks like we'll have a few under it here, at least if they keep this pace going. Yeah, certainly so. And definitely for uh, Frank O'Brien, if he can keep on this pace, he's set for 30-second PB. Yeah, so if you can hang on the coattails there, Bushin Spillane, who's stretching this race out now in the UL singlet, uh, the man from Tralee Harriers. And it'll be good news for Frank O'Brien at the end of it. Of course, the 3,000 metres not an off-to-run event for a lot of these guys. They'll be maybe doing 15s, maybe a couple of 3Ks indoors. But when it comes to outdoor running, uh, 3K, not their usual distance. So... There should be some chunks taken off old PBs. And we see coming through with three laps to go is Oshin Spillane still in the lead from Frank O'Brien and Kean Kelly there leading that charge pack. Yeah, and that's Stephen Niall Fay. Shanahan of On Brew there in the black and red singlet. Just moving up in fourth position at the moment onto Kean Kelly's shoulder, splitting him and Stephen Fay. But as it was at the moment, Oshin Spillane is churning out a very healthy tempo up front. That really is a, a beautiful shot. I think sometimes when you when you sit in a stationary point or sit in the grandstand, you can't really tell the, the speed at which these athletes are moving. And you can see here what a 250 kilometer or below looks like from Oshin Spillane. You can see how quick the surroundings are passing by as he strides out with that brilliant camera angle. And uh, he really is opening up a big advantage here. It's 30 meters at the moment he has over Frank, Frank O'Brien. And then Keen Kelly. But Oshin Spillane looks to be on the way to a big personal best here. As you mentioned, 8.43 was the unreal athlete's personal best before now. He looks like he's going to destroy that, assuming, and it could be a big assumption, he doesn't fall apart here. The first signs of strain come on his face now as he passes the bell with 6.16 on the clock. So he looks like something in and around 8.30 is certainly doable with a big group of athletes, probably six, seven athletes clustered together in second or chasing second at the moment but they're going to have to produce something special but we saw it recently with Ephraim Giddy out front of the Morton Games last weekend had a lead like this with seven, eight hundred metres to run and it all fell apart on the last lap for him as the, the people who'd conserved their energy a little bit more in the pack sprung from there and launched their kicks but at the moment Oshin Spillan with 600 metres to run 6.49 on the clock he looks to be running as strong as ever he does, yeah, certainly out front. Looks very comfortable. So going around to the home straight for the penultimate time. You get roared on by this big crowd here on the home, in the home stand at MTU with this BAM Cork City Sports. Oshin Spillane with the lead. But Keane Kelly starting to make a big charge in behind now. The tall map from St. Adams AC. Um, that 30 metre lead being chopped down a little bit. But still a lot of work to do in this last lap as he comes up towards one lap to go. And it's going to be 7.21 on the clock, 7.22. So... Oh, Kean Kelly, he's closing that gap down. Can he get there? Stephen Fay making a move into third place as well. And number five, that is uh, Ben Lean Smith trying to hold on with Fay. So yeah. it's all still to play for here in this last lap. Yeah, Ben Lean Smith is a leave a lot but he's here in the that one of the best collegiate kits in the world, that UCC, UCC skull. Um, but he's back and forth at the moment. But Kean Kelly, he is the fastest man in the field on personal bests and he looks like he's going to be the fastest man in the field coming home because he has sprung from the pack and he is running down Oshin Spillane can he reel him in they're definitely going to be under 8.30 here and it looks like Keen Kelly is about to blow by Oshin Spillane but has Oshin Spillane saved something because he's been leading for a few laps now he's done really the hard graft out front 
Can Kean Kelly spring something? He hasn't quite got to him yet, and I don't think he's going to get to him. I think Kean Kelly has used up all his energy to get back to the coattail, and Oshin Spillane has something extra, a big kick. And the Kerry man reigns supreme. 8.23 on the clock. King Kelly is well below his personal best, I think, as well. 8.27, that was. He's just inside that. Stephen Fay takes third place. That'll be a personal best for him as well. He's just outside 8.30. Then it was Niall Shanahan of Von Brew. 8.40 was his best. He is well inside that. So the personal best here are absolutely streaming in from this open men's 3,000 metres, showing that when you give athletes a big stage, they tend to produce something big. Absolutely, yeah. Just keep an eye on the uh, official result for that one. Um, but 8.23, 35 on the clock. Like we've said before, like for these lads, some very developmental athletes here just coming out, running big PVs, and it's a, a stepping stone for them towards greater things on the, the 1500 or the 5000 towards championships. And they get to come down here to the Cork City Sports, they get to warm up with the real elite athletes in the, the underground indoor area here. Um, they get to see the very, very best of some of Irish, certainly Ireland's very best athletes, as well as some really world class stars sharing the wall track with them, realise that's the stage they can get to and get out here and put on big performances like that. And PBs are the reward of Zeke and Kelly suffering there from that big last lap effort. And then we get the final athlete just crossing the line here for that Cork Athletics Open 3000 metres for men. Bodies strewn across the track after nine and a half minutes of serious effort. So 8.23.34 is now come up on the clock as the official time for Ushin Splan. That one, truly Harrier man in that UL singlet. You see Una Bryce there on screen. Just rehydrating, I think just after failing. Yeah, one attempt left for Una Bryce at 3.75. One and done if she doesn't get it. You can see that they're just putting the bungee cord back on the uh, on the pole vault uprights there, so that would suggest that the already done. is done. But we'll just wait and see. Keep a close eye on that one. Flo the Walsh is just texting home her result there, saying how good things were down here at the Bam Cork City Sports. Sun is shining, mom and dad, and I've had a great time. We're all having a great time. I think um, the bungee cord can put back on and the bar is going up and there's possibly a bit of training going on between the two girls or certainly uh, Una Bryce. Do you reckon they had a side bet? Or else it's the men getting their warm-up started. Yeah, one or, one I or would both. suspect it's that, but it looks like Una Bryce. Yeah, indeed, the third failure has just come up on the results system for Una Bryce. So her evening is done. She takes victory with that superb first-time clearance at 360. You just see uh, Key and Kelly there on screen. Staggering to his feet and uh, notifying the cameraman that he was actually second to focus on uh, Oshin Spillane instead. How very gracious of him. I would have really milked that moment. Um, absolutely, he should have milked it. He has number two on his chest and number two on the night. But as I said, Oshin Spillane, ninth fastest coming into this field with uh, that 842 PB previously, but took a good chunk off that. Got some 18 seconds off of tier tonight. So, fantastic performance. And Stephen Fay will be making up that podium in his Dublin Track Club singlet, the Rohini Shamrock man. Great stuff. The women's hammer has also completed while that 3K was happening. And we'll just give you the official final standings here. And no surprise, it was indeed Catherine Koch Jakobsen who held on 68-07. Really is outstanding throwing and it's been a privilege to witness it here in Cork. She takes victory ahead of her fin Finnish rival, Suvi Koskinen through 66 36 and in the third it was katie head of great britain with 65 61 and well done too to finland's kira van Inen, 65 50 for fourth seven women over 60 meters there excellent throwing and michaela walsh is just outside it with 59 18. well done to all in that core county council women's hammer as we see the presentation to ushin spillan of Tralee harriers for that open men's 3,000 metres. The Cork Athletics open men's 3,000 metres. Official results are not in, but it was certainly under 8.25, I believe. Maybe the buggy might have driven across the line there ahead of the athletes, perhaps stopped the laser a little bit early, but it was it was way, way under 8.30 regardless. So. Yeah, I did think it stopped, the clock had stopped just a little bit early, so possibly in 8.25 or 26, but 
uh, big PVs. So all that the real stuff. winner is the guy who drove the buggy. Absolutely, unlike give the guy that who man drove, a gold medal. Unlike the guy who drove Tiger Woods' golf buggy. Yeah, he's still he's still recovering from that. The buggy driver, I can confirm though, has retained his position for the upcoming races. So we look forward to hats off to them as well because that was a beautiful beautiful shot we enjoyed there. And uh, we queried earlier, Chair, when did the World Athletics Continental Tour begin? And a man who is now overseeing the World Athletics Continental Tour is thankfully watching, I assume in Galway, although he could be in Oregon or just about anywhere in the world, Pierce O'Callaghan. Absolutely. Um, and he has confirmed it was 2020. Thank you, Pierce. Uh, it's Excellent. great to have an Irish meeting on that Continental Tour bronze level. And we're going to see the presentation now for that women's hammer. And again... We, we showed you as much as we could, but of course we got distracted by the track events and indeed the women's pole vault. Always lots going on here at the Cork City Sports. But thankfully we got to see a good few efforts from this truly, truly international class field in the women's hammer. The Cork County Council women's hammer. Third place was Katie Head of Great Britain, as we said, 65-61. Second place there, Suvi Koskinen of Finland, 66-36. And this is a young lady you'll be seeing a lot more of watch if you're watching World Athletics competitions and Olympic Games in the years ahead. This is 23-year-old Catherine Jacobson, 6807 tonight, a few meters down in her best. But most of all, she's got, most importantly, she's got the win heading off, aiming to make a world final in Oregon. It's great to have such a horde of athletes here who'll be heading straight over to Eugene. And we'll be seeing them on our TV screens in the weeks to come. Yeah, it's certainly one thing I suppose we've missed and kind of forgotten about in the last couple of years that you can get down to a meet like this and be, you know, a metre or two away from really true world-class athletes. If you're wandering around, you might bump into them out getting their coffee before their race or in the bathroom or wherever else in the car park and you just happen to bump into somebody that you'll be watching, you know, a couple of hundred thousand miles away in uh, Oregon in a couple of weeks' time and thinking they're superstars. But you could be right here standing very close to them. Jerry, I don't know how much you know about geography, but Oregon is not a couple of hundred thousand miles away. <laughs> Meters, we'll say. Uh, yes. Maybe it is. Close it enough. feels like Who knows? It. It'll Takes certainly that. feel like it for a lot of Irish people who are rising in the middle of the night. Yeah, the team, evening sessions. Teams that to are travelling today are taking about 24 hours to get there, so it's going to feel like they're going to the moon and back. But, um, like I said, it's going to be... Uh, yeah, it's a real a treat for all the young and old fans alike here at the Cork City Sports certainly is there's the lineup for the JDC group T54 wheelchair men's 800 meters and it is a strong one we have an Irishman an Englishman a Scotsman and a Polish sounds like a joke but there is no punchline to this joke punishment is all there is in this one it's the two lap tango and we have some world class meters. operators namely the two Englishmen Ben Rowlings and Isaac Towers we expect to be firmly to the fore in this Ben Rowlings is the fastest Briton ever at the T34 category, over 200 metres to 5,000 metres. He competed at the Rio Paralympics in 2016, as did Isaac Towers, who won World Championship bronze in this event, the 800 metres, yeah, back in 2017. Kill, big start from Killian Dunn there on the inside, the Irishman. He's got a 156.11 PV, so he's starting to set the, set the pace, but the two lads on the outside there now, Isaac Towers and Sam Kolak, as they come to the break there, I'm sure it's a, it's a fairly hairy one, trying to break the stagger uh, for these men, try not to clash or collision, avoid each other as best as possible. And I think that is uh, Sam Kolak who's going out to the front. I think that's Isaac Towers. Sorry, yes, yeah, Isaac, Isaac Towers has just edged there, Sam Kolak, to the lead. Um, Isaac Towers is a 139 athlete at his best, as indeed is Ben Rowlings. Ben Rowlings there passing through your shot in fourth place, so he's just a bit far back at the moment. Killian Dundo, the Irishman, the one Irishman in here is getting a great reception. They pass through the bell in 54 seconds, and given the nature of wheelchair racing, they will come home a lot quicker than 55 seconds, you can be sure. But it is Isaac Towers, World Championship bronze medalist back in 2017, and he looks like he could be headed for gold here at the BAM Cork City Sports, because he looks to be pulling away from Sam Kolek of Poland, and indeed Killian Dunn of Ireland at the moment. There's a big gap back to Ben Rowlings. Yeah, Killian Dunn can just hold on here. He's going to have a, a huge PB because he's, uh, on paper, he's the guts of 25 seconds slower than Isaac Towers here. But the young Irish man needs to stick with Sam Kolak there, the pole. And out front, there's only been one winner here. Isaac Towers is storming away. He's committed to home straight. 
gets the round of applause from the, the spectators here in the stand. It's 1.36 on the clock now, so it's not going to be a PB, but it's certainly going to be quick. And Isaac Towers is away and clear from Sam Kolak of Poland. Isaac Towers stops the clock at 1.45, just doesn't quite stop, but it's certainly going to be a PB for Killian Dunn as well by the guts of five, six seconds. So brilliant race by um, Isaac Towers there, taking it out, Sam Kolak in second, and Killian Dunn. A brilliant performance from the Irishman with around 150 on the clock as he came through. Yeah, personal best for Sam Kolek in second and indeed Killian Dunn in third, so well done to them. Obviously given the, the levels to which Isaac Towers has already climbed, pun intended, Jer. Towers? Absolutely. No. No. Anyway, um, given the levels he's climbed with a 139 on the, on the board, it was always going to be difficult to recreate that here. Leading all the way as he did, but it was a wonderful performance from the 23-year-old Britain. Indeed. So as the JCD group 800 metres, we'll see that presentation very shortly as well. And you can see a packed stand here in uh, MTU Cork for the BAM Cork City Sports. And like that around, dotted around the grass banks, everyone around watching these field events action as well because of the fantastic weather we're enjoying here so far. So that men's long jump is getting warmed up uh, just below the uh, or the spectators closest to the screen here so they'll have a bird's eye view of the men's long jump coming up we've got one 8 metre jumper in that uh, followed by a host of great Irishmen and Zane Branco uh, talented young Australian as well so it'll be getting underway very shortly yeah great to see the, the crowd streaming in here one of the best value sports tickets you'll find in the country Students and OIPs get in for a fiver, under 12s free. General entrance just uh, yeah, the hurdles has been laid out on track here as well. We have two uh, women's races in the 100 meter hurdles. Coming up very soon, including Sarah Lavin, who will be going off to the World Championships in Oregon later this week. Yeah, it will be very interesting to see. see the men's pole vaulters there getting their warm-ups in with the bungee cord on the bar and the women's pole vaulters getting their presentation so the cork 96 fm sponsored pole vault presentation See numbers 3 2 1 in order getting their medals in the same positions. So it went with the rankings Jody McGrath, Claude Walsh, and Linda Bryce. <laughs> Jody McGrath in third. Three fifty for Claude Walsh in second. Abby Strider's AC. And Una Bryce three sixty to take Cork ninety six FM pole vault here at the Bam Cork City Sports. Will they get her on Cork's 96 FM for the interview afterwards? We would hope so. They should. She certainly represented them very well in this competition, as did all the women in that pole vault. Our top three getting their medals, which is unique at an international competition called to get a medal around your neck. But it's certainly uh, a nice treat. You see sponsors and presenters lining up for the photograph those flowers just blowing slightly now we keep an eye on the wind gauge for this women's 100 meter hurdles coming up very shortly on the track as you can see in front that men's pole vault just getting their warm-ups underway as well getting the warm-up jumps done with the bungee cord get their marks right get used to the conditions here at MTU Cork saying that uh, women's 100 meter hurdles the second race is going to feature Sarah Lavin heading off to the world championships of course seventh at the world inter championships this year as well 
and the lady that she just pipped out in her heat to that world final. Meta Graviscard is going to be one of the favourites too. She's going to be in the lane beside her, the Danish champion, 15 time Danish champion, was at the Olympic Games last year for the 4x1 as well. And so she is a woman on the up and she's gotten the better of Lavin on a couple of occasions this year. You just see that long jump lineup, and like we've been saying all along, the numbers one denounces the, uh, the leader in the field on PB, certainly so. Alex Farquharson is there. The GB man is 801 at his best. Zane Branco, I think, is 784. Uh, Jack Roach in third, 783. And then uh, Sam Kogali, 775. Down to the Irishman, then Shane Howard, Sam Healy, 771, 762. We'll have uh, Nino Selek of Slovenia, Colin Burke, Rhys Adamola, Adrian Relta of France, and Adam Turner rounding out that field, Reese had a mole and they're a really exciting young talent from the local club, Leave LAC, as are Shane Howard and Sam Healy. So three local men here and three huge jumpers. Reese is uh, the youngest of them by a long way and he's also a super talented high jumper. So interesting to see what he can do with the home crowd here. Both uh, Shane Howard and Sam Healy, as well as Colin Burke of Sligo uh, and Rohini Shamrock are all, all based abroad now in the United States. Shane Howard here with Dwight Phillips, who I watched at the Cork City Sports in 2005, I believe. Uh, took the title down when um, we saw a huge windy jump there from Kieran McDonough as well. That was at UCC at the time. We're now across the, across the city in uh, CIT, but yeah, Dwight Phillips now leading the way for uh, Shane Howard, the local man, and guiding him to more glory. Sam Healy was with, uh, with Colin Burke at the University of Louisiana Monroe but has moved since I'm not sure exactly whereabouts he is but he's still down in the south of south of the US but as we said we've got two races here in this women's 100 meter hurdles a nice Irish lineup in heat one we've got Aqua Bakari we've got Emin Walfour F.J. Boons Kate Doherty Katrina Quiros and Sarah Quinn in the first race so Quinn and Doherty certainly uh, familiar names to any Irish watching who both uh, national medalists and national champions at their best. National champions at their best, I should say. Emin Walfour is uh, of Ohio State. The young Great Britain, she is fifth at their national championships a couple of weeks ago. And Katarina Quiroz, actually a really talented uh, triple jumper as well, called 13.29 indoors this year. Uh, just off her best of 13.41 PB, 13.44 over the hurdles so far this year. So she'll be certainly one to watch in this one. Did Ohio State ever have any good at picture? I don't think they did. Surely not. What was your name? Jesse something? Mr. Owens? Owen, Owen Jesse. Owen Jesse. He wasn't bad. No, so here we go. The O'Leary Insurance. Going to be the hurdles race one. We've got Bakari, Noir Four, Boons, Doherty, Quiros, and Quinn. And we are cleanly away here. It looks like FJ Boons there in the middle, as well as Kate Doherty going very, very well. And beside her, Quiros. So, Katarina the Quiros, Kate Doherty, FJ Boons are coming through here. But look at them in the wall for on the inside in the red. What's it going to be on the line? It looks like Quiros is going to take it from FJ Boons, from Emma and Walfour. A brilliant race there, 13.43 on the clock. And it is 0.1 meter per second win. So, basically, still conditions. Maybe a little bit of a crosswind down the back strip, but on this home straight, it'll be blocked by that stand. But a brilliant, brilliant race there um, from the top three, especially. Katarina Quiros, brilliant dip on the line. Uh, Kate Doherty is giving third place there. I think it is FJ Boons in second. Just get a confirmation on those results. We just have a look at the clock. Oh, sorry, Emma Noir was in third. Kate Doherty in fourth with 13.80. So must have clipped a hurdle down the track there. Let's see, we might get a look at the replay on that one. But brilliant, brilliant race call. Yeah, top stuff. Excellent. I know we go on and on about the wind, but you can see there, just we're getting a read on it for later on in the evening, I guess, and how these sprint races might go. But once the athletes came to a stop, their hair is blowing quite strongly, as indeed the flags are. But that's because after the finish line, when the grandstand stops, it's quite open. But the, the home stand here at the MTU Athletic Stadium provides quite a bit of shelter for the sprinters as they rip down that home straight. And that will give you the official result as soon as we have it. And Jer, we already have it. That's how quick they work here in Cork. Katarina Quiros of Portugal, 13.42 for the win. It was the Dutch athlete, FC Boons, in second, 13.52. Just edging Emma Nwafor of Great Britain, 13.53. And Tara Kate Doherty of Ireland, fourth, 13.80. Sarah Quinn, 14.14. And Oku Bakari, also of Ireland, fifth, sorry, sixth in 14.34. And as we said, 0 0.1, the win. Yeah, absolutely great way to get the home straight sprint action underway there. Katarina Quiroz coming off that last hurdle the best and a brilliant dip 
for the win. And we just see this uh, presentation here. Sam Kolak just getting his medal there um, after. Uh, and we have sorry, TVs Killian in third. For, yeah. That's Killian Dunn. Yeah, Killian Dunn, 149.79, taking about six seconds off his PB. Yeah, and the same for Sam Kolak. Not quite as big a personal best, but it is a personal best nonetheless. A one second personal best for the pole on the right, 148.87. Yep. And Isaac Towers of England gets the gold, 145.96. A dominant performance from start to finish. Very hard in a race like that where the drag effect is so strong. It is more like a cycling race than a running race to actually drop an athlete who is in your slipstream. And Isaac Towers did that. He dropped everyone. Yeah, he certainly did very, very impressive. He said he's gone much quicker than that at his best, but uh, a brilliant performance here for Isaac Towers taking the win. I guess that gold medal around his neck. Towers, Kolak, and Dunn. And shakes all around. So we'll have race two of the women's 100 meter hurdles come up next. Athletes just getting their practice runs done out on the home straight here. And that will feature the national champion and Olympian for Ireland, Sarah Lavin. Not to mention the former world champion for USA. Absolutely, two-time world indoor champion, almost, almost, almost Olympic champion. Lolo Jones, 2008 call, clipped the last hurdle, second, seventh hurdle, rather, or ninth hurdle. Rather. Eighth hurdle. Ninth. I watched it yesterday, Jerry. Was it eighth? Ninth. It was the I ninth think it was hurdle. the eighth. Or sorry, it was the it ninth. Was the ninth it was the second ninth. last hurdle. Yeah, you're she right. Was on her way to gold, clipped the ninth hurdle and ended up in fourth. Out of the medals, game over. Gail Devers straight through win. No, it wasn't. It was Don Harper. Don Harper. Sorry, not Gail Devers. I'm about ten years ahead of myself. Um, well, look, I get confused what day it is these days. But yeah, it was uh, obviously a heartbreaking, but for Lola Jones, but she bounced back so well and she's still running very well at the age of 39. Lola Jones. Yeah, dual Olympian went to the uh, Winter Olympics then in the bobsled as well. Yeah, finished fourth at the London Olympics. A lot of people forget that, I suppose. Yeah. Um, the nearly Lola woman Jones. of Olympic medals. She goes in She's lane one. 12.43 at her best. Yeah, former uh, US indoor record holder as well for a long, long time until uh, Sharika Jackson broke it, followed by Kendra Harrison. So. 772 indoors is unbelievable running. So there she is in the main one. She got Mathilde Health back there, outsider in two. She was at the World Indoor Championships this year as well, three time national champion from Denmark. Um, her PB at 1327 is set this year. Jade Barber, a fantastic uh, US hurdler, 1278 at her best. And we saw her take the win at the Morton Games earlier this week. Um, Semi finalist at the US Championships. So even to qualify for the US trials, uh, you need to be a real class athlete, and she certainly is. She'll be really one to watch here. Sarah Levin there, right in the middle of the field, number five on her chest. You can see there, calmly settling herself before this race. Seventh at the World Indoor Championships this year. 12.93 PB outdoors this year. Sub eight at the indoors. 7.97 to qualify for that final. Met the Gravis Guard, 15-time national champion. 8.02 indoors, the world champ. Just missed out in that final spot, and she will be hungry for a PB here. 12.89 outdoors this year and has beaten Sarah Lavin in a couple of races on the tour. She's certainly been around Europe. Greta Kerrick is there, eight-time national champion of Hungary. She's in fantastic shape as well. And Alicia Barrett of Great Britain. This should be a cracker. Settling behind the blocks to win gauge. Being ready to be pressed. It looks nice and calm here. The flags are lying limp. And we are cleanly away. And it is a great start there from Gravis Guard. And in, right in the middle there, Jade Barber is absolutely flying. It's Sarah Lavin trying to stick with her. And Lavin is coming through very, very well. Can Jade Barber hold on here? It's going to be Barber from Lavin from Gravis Guard. And it is Barber. 12.73 on the clock. What a run that is. We'll keep an eye on the wind gauge. Plus 1.3. What has Sarah Lavin run there? That's going to be very, very close to a PB. But it's a PB from the US. Jade Barber, as I said, semi-finals of the US trials earlier this year and comes to Cork and breaks that personal best, plus 1.3 metres per second on the clock. Unofficially, now official, 12.72 Jade Barber. That is unbelievable. 12.84 for Sarah Lavin, a huge personal best. Takes almost a tenth of a second off her best, and what a time to do it heading off to the World Championships, Carl. Yeah, and it was Mathilda held back there in third. I think she ran 13.4. Lola Jones there, fifth, 13.72. Just rounding out the field. But yes, Jade Barber and Sarah Lavin, a class quite literally apart a horrible incident there from Meta Grevsgaard 
of Denmark. Let's hope she's all right. She walks away okay. But what a performance from Jade Barber. And for Sarah Lavin, we heard from her the other night. You could see the expression on her face there. She ran a perfect, I think it was eight hurdle. It was a hurdle eight the other night where she clattered it. She was running a perfect race up until then. And she said she's still, she is a perfectionist by nature. She sought perfection tonight. And it looks like she's got a whole lot closer to it in second place. 12.72 for Jade Barber, 12.84 officially for Sarah Lavin. She has taken 900 of her personal best. Stunning performance from the Irish woman. Yeah, absolutely. You can see she was coming, up, coming towards the finish line there, gritting her teeth to get there, but and I'm sure disappointed not to have caught Jade Barber. And then once she saw the clock, the uh, fortune has changed, and she realised I've done something special here. 12.84, that is unbelievable running. And as expected, and you'll know already, she's the second fastest Irish woman, just Derville O'Rourke quicker than her, and she'll be hunting down that national record of Derville's. Sarah, an impressive uh, race there. Uh, describe her first. Um, I got out well, then my own race. To run a PP, a fast at home, in front of your friends, family, and the cheer. I got on the line, just thank you all so much. Yeah. And the form is good, uh, Sarah, at the moment, because you did uh, a season's best uh, last Saturday in the Morton, isn't it? 12.93, is it? That was 12.84, legal, so I think that qualifies me for everything I need next year, even, so, yeah. Thank you so much. You've ran here, of course, a number of times, but uh, we hadn't the city sports for a few years for obvious reasons. But it's great to be uh, here again in Cork in front of what is a great crowd tonight. Oh, it's amazing. When I walked out, I couldn't believe how full the stand was and the surrounding areas. Um, to run at home is so special. To run my best race ever at home, I'm touched. <laughs> well done, Sarah. Thanks for talking to us. Yeah, brilliant to hear from Sarah Lavin there. As she said, absolutely delighted and so happy to do it in front of a, uh, a home crowd, an Irish crowd cheering her home there just behind Jade Barber and a huge personal best and uh, off to the World Championships, which will kick off on the 15th of July. It'll be, uh, as I mentioned to you, Carl, the other day, that'll be the uh, basically the Grand Slam for Sarah Lavin in terms of championships. She's been to everything, been there, done that. Olympic Games last year, now to the World Championships. She's been to every championship under the sun got to the final of the World Indoors this year, 7th place, and now at 12.84 heading into the World Championships. There's definitely at least a semi-final there for grabs for her. Well, with the winner now of the 100 metre hurdles, women sponsored by O'Leary Insurance Group, uh, Jade Barber. Uh, Jade, great performance. Describe uh, your performance for us. I'm still just trying to process what happened. So, I just got out of blocks and held on a break. Your form is quite good, though, coming into Cork this evening, isn't it? Yeah, it's a huge improvement from the Morton Games. My arms are a little wild there. I try to keep them in today. Um, just uh, describe uh, the Cork audience here tonight. Is your first time running here? It is my first time running here, and it's really nice being in Cork because you guys seem to like track. The whole stands are filled. In the U.S., not so much. Well, well done. Our winner, ladies and gentlemen, Jade Barber of the 100-meter hurdles for women. Thank you, Jade. that standard at the US Championships. Yeah, absolutely. I think she was staying at the, the stands are full here in Cork, but she doesn't get used to in, in the US. Uh, people here that are actually track and field fans cheering her home and uh, packed stadium here in uh, MTU in Cork, but she said she's trying to process what happened there. I got her arms a little bit tidier here today and certainly paid off a big PB um, and she'll be very, very happy with that as her season progresses, of course. No World Championships for her, semi-finalist at the, the US Trials, but She'll be back in Cork, I'm sure, again, when she sees that uh, if you come here and run a PB, then definitely go again. I think we see Meta Gravesgard is going to have a one-woman race here. They've cleared the track of hurdles apart from one lane, so only lane four has hurdles in it. Yeah, we're and not exactly sure what happened. I think she kind of just jumped directly upright out of the blocks as if she mistimed or didn't hear She stuttered into it, correctly. Took, took an and extra then, step or two. Uh, it's great to see her getting another chance. Yeah, and she is cleanly away here. Let's see what she can do here on her own. I'm not sure if uh, it actually counts when the athlete is running home. She's absolutely flying it down the home straight here at the minute. Meta Gravis got fair play to her. An absolute exhibition solo race. 13.27 on the clock. A plus 1.1 win. So 
she gets the run out she didn't come all the way to court for nothing and fair play to the officials and the, the meet director here for giving her the chance to get that race in because it'll be a, a waste of a day otherwise as she's heading off the world championships for the the hurdles and the four by one relay yeah she was running great up to hurdle seven there but a mistake just cost her i think a few tenths Done to Meta Grevsgaard of Denmark 12.89 at the other best. Yeah, I've done that myself at the Connacht Schools on many occasions. Just one hurdle down the track and gave it a lash. Uh, so I don't know if she's ever done that at the Danish equivalent of the Connacht, Connacht Schools, but possibly so. But fair play to her getting back out there. Do you she take gold, silver, and bronze when you do that? Just the one of her. I think they melted into the one to give you some sort of try out of medal. But uh, yeah, Meta Grevsgaard there getting 13.27 run out. It's important just to get a a blowout into the legs especially after that uh, unfortunate start she had in the initial race and we have the result here and the podium Matilda Helbeck 13.37 gets her bronze medal second place and we're going to hear a huge cheer here for Sarah Lavin she waves to the crowd a big personal best 12.84 for the Emerald AC athlete sets her up absolutely perfectly for that world championship going up and Probably US the best performance of her life. Absolutely. Certainly outdoors. Yeah. Jade Barber, 12.72 for the PB as well. So she'll be a woman that'll be very keen to come back to the Cork City Sports next year for that O'Leary Insurance 100 meter hurdles women getting their medals. So the women's 100 meters is up next. We're going to have Lucy May Sleeman in one of Ireland, Mathilde Kramer of Denmark in two, Crystal Wu of Great Britain in three, Molly Scott goes in four for Ireland, Kiara Parker of the United States in five, Joan Healy in six, the Irish woman and local woman, Christy Edwards of Australia in seven, and Lauren Roy in eight. So very interesting in this one. Lucy May Sleeman is a schools athlete, having an absolute storm of a season, breaking records all around her and performing, getting herself onto uh, the Irish relay panel for a couple of events earlier in the year, not quite picked for the World Championships, unfortunately, but going through those World Championships will be Molly Scott, Joan Healy and Lauren Roy, part of that women's 4 by one But there's a bit of work cut out for them here with Kiara Park. We saw Martin Games the other day. She's a 10-0-2 performer, 11-0-2 performer at her best, 11-0-8 this season. She'll be heading towards that meet record, 11-14. Conditions are really good. She ran 11-39 in Martin Stadium on Saturday. And she led the way in the M YMCA call post race down on the home straight, got the whole crowd involved. She's got Molly Scott beside her. We saw Molly Scott get to the semi final of the World Indoor Championships. She just pipped to the national title um, a week and a half ago by Rashida Adeleke. But she is certainly in the form of her life. And she'll be hoping for something big here. As will Joan Healy there, PB form in lane eight, the local athlete. Um, she has her real teammate on the outside, Lauren Roy. Christy Edwards of uh, Australia, we saw her in the 200 at the Belfast International, we saw her in the 100 at the Morton Games, and she's on her Irish tour, ahead of the Commonwealth Games, coming up end of July for the Australian, coached by Davy Reid, former coach of uh, Amy Foster, Ireland's fastest woman for a long time, certainly one who led the charge in the female sprints, but we've got Sleem and Kramer, Awua, Scott, Parker, Healy, Edwards and Roy. Centra women's 100 meters. Keep an eye on Molly Scott right there in the middle in the red fast starter, but Kiara Parker is the class of the field in terms of PBs in this one. Look at Parker go. Molly Scott's going very, very well, but look at Parker coming through now. Joan Healy is having an absolute flyer. Crystal Lewis there beside her as well. Sleeman on the inside, the local line having a storm. As Crystal Lewis is going to come through from possibly just Molly Scott and Joan Healy. 11.37 on the clock, and it's a 2.9 win, unfortunately. So it is illegal. Won't count for records, but certainly no harm in running fast um, ahead of going off to a world championship for those Irish athletes. Get the legs moving, plus 2.9 wind. 11.36 for Molly Scott. The track. Our next event the field and it has is Scott the down as the winner here, but we'll just have to wait and see what the official result says on that. But illegal win, unfortunately. And a fantastic race there. Chris Lewis just waves to the camera. She thinks she's got the better of it. And we'll just get a look at the replay and see what we can make from it. As you said, we saw a brilliant start there. Joan Healy got out really, really well. Put a shock on Kiara Parker. Got right up beside Molly Scott as well. Crystal Wooler there. 
just in lane three, I think got the better From of them all. Lucy Mays as I said, Stilly the local Lee. athlete. The youngster, the school's athlete. From this Carolyn Cork and a the stormer of a run. Really got the better of them all. We see Colin Burke there, Brahini Shamrock from Great on the Britain, men's longer Bernice runway. Coulson. Number eight on his chest. And from Killarney Valley Athletic Club in Ireland, Kira Kennelly. What can you do Kira here? Kennelly. Tailwinds for those long jumpers as That's well, which is always a nice treat. Just about Unfortunately, to start. we see the, that women's race who was just uh, over the legal limit. But these men will be happy to jump far regardless, as those women will be running fast. Joan Healy, 11.41 in third place, it says on the clock on the infield as we wait those official results to update. As we said, you can pop onto the Cork City Sports website and look, look for the event details and you'll get to see what the uh, what the live results are for those field events as they go. Well, I'm now with the uh, winner of the 100 metres for women, sponsored by Centra, Crystal Awa. Uh, congratulations, uh, Crystal. You didn't go off to the best start, but what a finish. Thank you. Yeah, honestly, my coach was like not to focus too much on my start. Um, he told me what to do towards the end of the race and I just did what he said. And yeah, it was good. <laughs> First time competing in Cork, isn't it? What do you think of the atmosphere and so on? Did you enjoy uh, the Cork uh, crowd there? Yeah, I think it's amazing, honestly. Like, I didn't even think like it would be this great, but it's actually absolutely amazing. And I'm really grateful to be here, first time in Ireland, so very grateful. The conditions were okay, yeah, favourable? Yeah, I was nervous this morning because it was a bit cloudy, but then the sun came out and the wind's in the right place, so I can't really complain, to be fair. And what's uh, next for you, Crystal? Uh, still a chance for the Europeans? I hope so, yeah. I'm going to have a bit of a break. I've been racing back to back, so I'm going to go back into training. And yeah, come out and go to the Europeans. Congratulations, uh, Crystal Awua, the winner of the 100 metres women, sponsored by Centre from Great Britain. Thanks very much, Crystal. Great to hear from Crystal Awua there, women, winner of the Central Women's 100 metres. I think we're going to hear from Molly Scott now very shortly as well. Getting second place in that one. Well, I'm with Ireland's Molly Scott now. Uh, Molly, that was a, a close run race. You got off to uh, probably the best possible start. Yeah, I got a really good start again. I, like, I just got caught there at the finish. So definitely have to work on that, but it was, you know, the practice, the conditions are so good today, and it felt like a really good race, and I'm happy enough to have it. Obviously, I suppose three quarters way through felt that you, you might have had it. Yeah, definitely. I was just trying to hold on, you know, for all of June. I was, Mostly injured, so I'm just trying to come back now. So I think I'm going to have to race myself back into, into shape and get some really fast times because I definitely need the race practice. Describe what this uh, meet means to Irish athletics. Um, it means so much to have like a huge crowd here. You know, the atmosphere is amazing. And to, to race on home soil means so much, especially to have so many people in Cork and all around Ireland interested in coming to watch us do our best. Top class athletes at our doorstep here, of course, uh, to enjoy tonight. Yeah, exactly, and the weather was absolutely perfect, so we couldn't have asked for any more. So thank you to everyone who came and watched. Ladies and gentlemen, Molly Scott. There is Molly Scott, the first Irish woman home, 11.41. Joan Healy, the exact same time, just separated by the thousands. So it was Chris Lawua, 11.36, Molly Scott, 11.41 and Joan Healy, 11.41, also Kiara Parker, down to 11.44. Lucy Mays Sleeman, that would be a huge BB, but for that illegal win, 11.46, down to fifth base, but shows how fast she is and what a talent she is coming through. And I think 11.6 is her PB so far this year. Confirming that result in the women's hammer, <laughs> Catherine Jacobson, 68.07. Head off to the World Championships in Oregon with a victory. Suvi Koskinen in second with 66-36 and Katie Head of Britain in third, 65-61. The Cork County Council women's hammer. Well done to all the ladies. That was a great competition to start the evening here. Yeah, the men's long jumpers had just got underway as well. Uh, early marks so far. Jack Roach out to six, 67, but illegal wins for all the jumps in that first round so far. Just see the rounding out of that women's hammer competition Margaret Hayden down in last place there but a big PB for her over a metre and a half uh, under a PB so great performance there in the Irish woman yeah, next up on track as we see the conf confirmation of results in the Cork 96 FM women's pole vault with the local lady Una Bryce the teenage star 360 that clearance 
takes victory as a first time clearance. Claude Walsh of Abby Strider, second with 350, and Jody McGrath of Nina Olympic, third with three metres. Next action on track, it's going to be at 7.20 pm, and we've got two men's 100 metre races coming up, loaded with quality, as always. After that, we're heading to 800 metre action from 7.40, and then 3,000 metre action from 8 pm. And it's 200 metres, 400 metres, and a mile to wrap things up. That's the track action. We'll have plenty of action in the field as well. Over the coming two hours, we're on air until just after 9 p.m. Yeah, absolutely. We've got some serious sprinters coming up, that, like we just saw in those women's hurdles and flat events. And a lot of the men doubling up in ones and twos. And certainly the weather, as we said, is, is perfect for sprinting right now. Just if that wind could calm down slightly, get some legal times on the clock. Israel or Sunday is going to be chasing that men's 100 metre record. But... Next up, we will have that uh, men's 100 metres race one and two, and that men's shot put getting very underway very soon as well. Should be a national slogan, Ger, if that wind could calm down slightly. Absolutely. Story of Irish athletics. Certainly this summer, for sure. You can see the, the end section of the programme, that uh, men's 3,000 metres. We saw the open 3,000 area, but the elite section goes later. And then, of course, we're out with the mile later on this evening. See can Cahill Doyle come back and get one better second place at the Morton Games. 3.57 PB there. He'll be baying for blood here at MTU later on tonight. Certainly. Some presentations ongoing for the women's 100 metres. Carlos Molly Scott takes second place. Eleven forty one for Molly Scott, also eleven forty one for Joan Healy in third. Split by two thousandths of a second. And it was Crystal Awua of Great Britain, eleven thirty six, unfortunately. Wind assisted to two point nine. But always good to get the legs moving at that speed, Jer. Absolutely, yeah. Like I said for uh, Lucy May Slimming and also for Joan Healy, that would be a big PB for her as well, eleven forty one if that wind was just a little bit less, but now she knows she can do it. And the wind uh, suits her in a race later in the summer she can push towards the European standard and certainly solidifies herself as part of that women's 4x1 relay team heading off to Oregon very soon later this week yeah great to have an Irish 4x100 metre team for the first time ever at the world championships in the women's side yeah absolutely qualified themselves through that world relays last year so it's nice to not be chasing times all summer as uh, some of the other relay teams have to secure, to secure the place at the European championships later this year but those women knew those places there and it certainly gives themself a, gives them great uh, incentives for early season races in the sprints as we see Shane Howard there of Bandon AC local man in Cork now based stateside national champion on numerous occasions Again, shall we say some more notoriety for himself during the pandemic when he was jumping hay bales I believe absolutely or jumping onto hay bales yeah fantastic photos we saw in the uh, Irish papers of those efforts from Shane Howard and here he goes down the runway it's been illegal wins so far all round um, as soon as you get the white flag this is look too yes. happy with it but he gets the white flag nonetheless 2.1 win so it's going to be illegal unfortunately I'm just seeking the scoreboard get uh, turned around enough that we can see it Jar says hoping the official is listening to him Turn left. Will they turn the turn other way. Will they turn right? Oh, almost. Not quite. See that. There we go. 7.48. 7.48 from Shane Howard. The men's race one. 100 metres. Kanjika Onwera. Dominic Ashwell. Connor Mori. Kieran Daly. Colin Doyle. Chris Sabanda. Uno Ayavoro. And Paul Costello. So a whole host of men who were in that uh, national 100 metre final uh, a week and a bit ago in Martin Stadium go in this race one here in the 100 metres sponsored by Super Value certainly Colin Doyle the man in the middle bronze medalist in that national championships the Levi man the local man his club mate Conor Morey also goes in this one in lane three but Dominic Ashwell he's a man of serious calibre fifth at the World Junior Championships back in 2018 over the 100 metres has a, a big 60 metre best this year, 664. 
Now with the field yeah, events, our next field event is the Park City Council men's shot put competition. We have seven competitors taking that competition. Dominic Ashwell, the fastest PBs. But what can these Irish men do? There's Irish sprinting in a rich vein of form at the minute. There's a whole host of men down in the 10-4s, uh, which is, has been rarely seen before. And taking that kind of time to get to, to national medals is really impressive. And like we said, in race two, we will have the Irish under-23 record holder from just two days ago. 10.26 is the other Sunday. Just eight hundredths of a second to equal the fastest ever by an Irishman, that of Paul Hessian's 10.18. And certainly if the wind keeps up what it is, we'll see some fast times on the clock, but will it be legal? Will we get that national record and close to it? Certainly another uh, under-23 record up for grabs for Israel Sunday. Italian indoor outdoor champion. We will have a sub-10 man in that heat as well, Colin. Enrico Brunches of South Africa, 10.04 just two days ago. Windy, albeit, at uh, Le Chaux de Fons, which is a magic track for times in the sprints. Uh, we've seen some stats from PJ Vazel there saying there was, uh, I think, over 40, 50% were PBs. And uh, the same back in 2019 when it was heavily contested, 65% PB. So at almost 3,000 meters altitude, the wind t tends to be uh, perfectly in their favor as well. So we see some magic performance that's sometimes not replicated elsewhere. It is kind of wild that you can set a world record at altitude. Yes, I think um, the show de Fons isn't ratified by GB Athletics or British mm. Athletics for qualifying standard purposes. So. Some need up to Mount Everest and build a track. Yeah, may need to be the case elsewhere. They did that for um, a long jump or a pole vault. Pole vault? Uh, they went... I think Will Clay did it with Christian Will Taylor Clay, triple, triple jump. jump. Apologies, yeah. They went... Uh, Didn't really work out. Not quite, Possibly not quite. because they were halfway up the mountain. And freezing. So, Kemjika Omuera, Dominic Ashwell, Conor Mori, Kieran Daly, Colin Doyle, Chris Savanda, Bruno Ayavoro, and Paul Costello. And we are away. Dominic Ashwell out there very well. And Conor Mori as well. Colin Doyle in the middle going very, very well. But Conor Mori looks to have it at the minute. But Dominic Ashwell there in the green of the Nike coming through very well. And right in the middle there, Kieran Daly. I think Kieran Daly got a 10.43 is on the clock. Plus 1.3, illegal wind. So quick times and legal times, that is. Kieran Daly with a late finish there. The Britain in the white vest. He had his compatriot Dominic Ashwell in lane three. Got out the best of the lot. And Colin Doyle, Conor Mori trying to stick with them there to leave El Man in the middle of the picture. But no doubt about the winner there. Kieran Daly of Great Britain, the 29 year old, 10 18 at his best, 10 43 today. And we just keep an eye on the results link to see who got the rest of the spoils. You can see Colin Doyle there just to the left of Daly going very, very well down the, the home straight here. And Dominic Ashwell there on the inside in the green and blue Nike singlet, number five on his chest. Colin Doyle, the national bronze medalist in the 100 metres. But no doubt about the winner there is Kieran Daly. And there are a few men coming up in race two of the men's 100 metres who will be looking down that track, seeing 1.3 plus on the wind gauge and thinking, thank you very much, I'll have some of that. As we see... As Adrian Relight of France, 7.29 the first round. Didn't see if he got a white or a red flag there, he just hit in his hands, but I think that was a red flag. Our officials doing the scoreboard, not updating, just putting the numbers back around to one for Alex Farquharson to have a go. Into the third round now, and it is Zane Branco leading the way with a 771, ahead of Jack Roach with 767, and in third, Sam Kigali with 757. Just the lineup for that second race of the men's 100 metres Solomon Bakari, Bismarck Boateng, Ian Kerr, Enrico Brunches, Israel Olatunde, Sam Gordon, Dewey Hammond, and Leon Reed. Of course, as I mentioned, Leon Reed competed in the Olympic Games in the 200 last year, got to the semi finals of that. He'll be going to the 200 metre later today as well. He'll be off to the Commonwealth Games in a couple of weeks' time. Enrico Brunches, 9.97 at his best, 10.04, windy a couple of days ago, just Israel Olatunde, that 10.26. Um, Ian Kerr has gone 10 36 this year. He's 10 14 man at his best. In fact, the first, the guys on the inside lanes, 2 3 and 4, or 1 2 and 3 rather, Bakari, Boateng, and Kerr are all between 10 13 and 10 14 at their best. Bakari now 35 years of age. He's 10 36 or 10 threes this year. He's focused more on the 200s. He's got down to 20.6. But we see Kerr Canelli there in the women's high jump, which is underway also. We'll try and get a full lineup of that for you very shortly. 
but I think we're at the opening height still in that one. I think we are missing uh, Summer Lecky, the one of the pre-event favourites, just a failure there for Canelli. But we do have Pippa Rogan, Despoina Maltampe, uh, Michelle Swat Lee, Holly Mills, Emily Whelan, Lara Merzo, Dana Keeley, Aoife Sullivan, Bernice Coulson and Kira Canelli. As we see the men's shot put kicking off also. So we saw a brilliant men's shot put competition up in Morton Stadium two days ago. Yeah, that's Andrew Liskowitz. US, former World University Games medalist. That's his opening effort. Meet record 21.47. With a man like Italy's Nick Ponzio in the arena. 21.83, his best. That could well be under threat. About 1 meter 70 for the women's high jump. There's Bernice Coulson of Great Britain, 177 at her best. And she goes clear. So, first time over 170 for Bernice Coulson. It's a competition under Ray Nicely. And Sam Healy is storming out the long drop one way, and he is after having a huge jump, and he is delighted. It's not Sam Healy, is it? Let me just clarify that one. Is there number three? Uh, Jack Roach, sorry, of Great Britain. 783 at his best. And we'll see the wind is 3.2, so it won't be a legal jump in terms of PBs. We can just get a look at what the scoreboard is before they turn it away from us. No. Kira Kennelly back in for attempt number two in the women's high jump, and it's no good in that attempt either. 785 in the long jump there, so a would be PB there for uh, Jack Roach, but. Not quite on the legal side of things. This is Sven Pullman of Netherlands in the shot put, a best of 2022. It's hard to see from that angle exactly what it was, but we'll update you as soon as possible. previous throw but fingers crossed we got good updates earlier on as we see the field introducing some of our field for the men's 100 meters race two we expect this will be a faster race given this is loaded with quality and that man number 10 Israel Olatunde Irish under 23 record the other night at the Morton Games of Sanctuary 10 26 there's a few people texting me saying Paul Hessian's Irish record of 10 18 if Israel gets a good win could well be under threat they jumped to the conclusion, but who if Israel can... Who was texting that? Captain Obvious? A few people. Two people, specifically. A couple of Captain Obvious. They shall that. remain unnamed. However, if they get it right, I'll name them. Don't embarrass them like that. There is Dewey Hammond from Great Britain. Sam Gordon has run 10.24 this year as well. He's uh, just in the lane to the right of Dewey Hammond there with Leon Reed on the outside. Still looking for a bit of form. Yeah, Leon just uh, was talking to Paul Halford, who was reporting at the National Athletics League there, where Leon was running a couple of relays for Birchfield Harriers. Mentioned he, uh, his L5 disc popped, and he missed about five weeks of training recently, so still making his way back, trying to recover fitness ahead of the Commonwealth. So we're called to our marks for this. Super value men's 100 metres. See what can happen here. Hopefully, this wind plays ball. We can see what Israel Tunde can do with Enrico Brunches there in the green to his left, the right on the screen. 997 at his best. Could we see a sub 10 here at Cork? That would be an unbelievable scenes for everyone in this crowd. Sun is shining, and we are ready to go. And we are cleaning away. And Israel Otunde gets a really, really good start there. What can Brunches do? Trying to get back up with him. Israel Otunde. Brunches now starting to pull clear away in the green. Beside him, Ian Kerr going very, very well. Right on the inside there. It's very close. Otunde get right back up there. 10.32. Solomon, Solomon Bakari with a brilliant finish. Israel Otunde in the last five metres seemed to come from nowhere. 2.9 tailwind. So it's not going to count an official time. I imagine that probably wasn't much use to them. Looks more like a crosswind. But Israel Latunda, I think, got that. We are positioned right on the finish line here. Not to tempt fate, but it was very, very close between Israel Olatunde. 
and Solomon Bakari. Absolutely, yeah, brilliant, brilliant run there. Really, really close race, just shows how good these athletes are and what a brilliant job the uh, director here at Cork City Sports has done to get such a high calibre field. But 10.32, clock stopped at. I think it might have been Israel Tunde, but it's going to take a while for that one to be sorted out. You can just see that head-on shot there. Burnt is in the green, and we get this one from the line. I think Israel did get there just from um, Sam Gordon to his right in the blue. So really, really close race there. It was all chop and change in the last 10 metres as the men stand around waiting to see uh, do their names pop up on the screen and what the results will say. And again, he's not going to be shouting from the rooftops about the time, but Israel Atunde, if he has won that, has beaten three men who have run 10.1 and one man has run 9.9 for 100 metres. Yeah, Granted, absolutely. he's on home turf, but those are quite the athletes to be defeating for this 20-year-old man. Yeah, by Daniel said, Kilgallen. A man who has run 10.04 just two days ago, uh, coming over from the Show de Fons in Switzerland in Henrico Brunches. So, certainly scalps there. We wait to see that official result, but a brilliant, brilliant run from Israel Tunde. He's performing every time he steps on the track this summer. And he's going to be hoping that there'll be a men's 4 by one going to the European Championships at the very least and see what I, he can do in terms of PBs uh, as we go forward in the summer. He already has a host of them so far in that 10.26 from two days ago that national under 23 record for the man the UCD singlet from the dock coached as you said by Daniel Kilgallen there was a whole host of fantastic uh, sprinters in that group Israel's teammate Joseph Ojiwumi absolutely flying in as well we saw Kate Doherty in the hurdles but back on the women's high jump far still at 170 we see a failure there and I think that is Efo Sullivan 178 175, 175 sorry the bar is up to so Either her opening height or she's gone clear at 170. But, uh, no good at that attempt. Number three in the men's shot put. So we shuffle to our sh sheets is Christian Zimmerman, the German. 2045, his best. And he gets the white flag on that one. That'll be to round two there. And back in the high jump, we've got Bernice Coulson again from Great Britain. She goes clear at 175. Just two centimetres shy of her PB, so she's certainly pushing towards that on performance so far. Looked comfortable there. Still no result of that men's 100 metre up there. Still hoarding around the finish line here to see what's going on. Someone's really zooming in, Ger. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Enhancing with, it. With good, good reason. It must be a close one. the 100 meters from Ben sponsored by Super Value and Israel and uh, what a run that was uh, for the finish in the end to uh, separate you but uh, what a performance yeah I want to play a good performance against all these great guys yeah I'm just really happy to be here uh, with some race to come out on top because uh, there were serious uh, competitors up against you tonight in this 100 meters if yeah, that's what you need to get better you know I come into every race wanting to go for the win uh, yeah, yeah, uh, do you see the improvements uh, race by race, uh, meet by meet? Yeah, for sure, you know, that's how you get better. Just by like, racing against the best guys. And, uh, yeah, that's the Describe uh, what this uh, meeting in Cork means to Irish athletics. Oh, it's great to just have, like, you know, our own competitions, you know, to bring, like, we are athletes together and just have a good time in competition. You know. It's really good to see the crowd and it's a large crowd, so yeah, it's really good to be here. And you've got the Europeans to look forward to in Munich uh, early August. Yeah, for sure, you know, I'm really looking forward to that. That's my first um, outdoor senior championship, so I'm really excited for that. Time has been confirmed, Jeff, but hopefully it's a PB. Yeah, hopefully, we'll see. Well done, thank you very much, Israel. Great to hear from Israel Tunde there and said he's first time racing in Cork. He's absolutely delighted to be here watching on a show. What a show he did put on. Took a, a lot of scalps there. Still waiting for that result to be confirmed, but a fantastic performance there. Certainly not phased by the calibre of athlete around him. Um, if we had him in the show de Fonds there two days ago, we might have seen a, a sub 10 from Israel with the way the results compare from there to here. Certainly. He's a man we'll be seeing in the Irish Fest for many, many, many years to come. 
course he was in the World Indoor Championships this year as well, just 100th of a second away from Paul, Paul Hessian's indoor record and the result is confirmed, that 2.9 win making the results, uh, no PBs for any of the athletes in the field but 10.31 Israel Tunde, just 200th of a second ahead of Sam Gordon of Great Britain and Henrico Brunches and Solomon Bakari separated by the thousands of a second from 10.34 just behind that, 10.37 Ian Kerr just shows how close that was as just uh, over a tenth of a second separating first to sixth in that one. Yeah, next on track it's going to be the Cork City Council women's 800 metres. And a lot of people here were looking forward to the rematch between Isabel Boffy of Britain and Lee Louise Shanahan. But unfortunately, Louise Shanahan's a late withdrawal here. But Isabel Boffy, as a result, will probably start as the heavy favourite given she took victory in convincing fashion recently at the Morton Games. Here is the full lineup from Poland, Eliza Megger, from Ireland, Jenna Bramall, from Australia, Sarah Billings, fellow Australian Ellie Sanford alongside her. Champion at the Morton Games the other night, Isabel Boffy, perhaps the favourite again here. From USA, McKenna Keegan, second at the NCAA Championships. From France, Cynthia Anise Thomas, a two flat athlete this year. From Hungary, Bianca Bartha Kerry, 21 national titles she has won in total and from Germany another big contender here World University Games silver medalist in 2019 Christina Herring 200.7 to win her national championships in recent weeks will be a big contender and Isolt O'Donnell will be out there on the outside pacemaking I'm sure she'll be looking for something under 60 seconds has done brilliant jobs recently at the Morton Games so this is a race loaded with quality and hopefully that wind doesn't blow too strongly. Just looking at the flags with 200 metres to go there. They're currently billowing out from their flagpoles. They've got one presentation to go before this race. And as we said, you can keep an eye on the results from all those field events that are underway. And by keeping an eye on the Cork City Sports website, get into the event details there, you'll be able to see the uh, link to the live results. Possibly the same link that you found this live stream on, so pop back on there, open a new tab, you can keep watch keep watch on the uh, field event action through there, see how the scores are updated. That men's long jump, men's shot put, men's pole vault, women's high jump, all underway here. It is non-stop action here at the BAM Cork City Sports. Yeah, presentation time for the men's 100 metres, the super value men's 100 metres. Yeah, and Rico Bruches, sorry, they're just getting the, his bronze medal in the third place, 10.34. As we said, just two hundredths of a second ahead of Solomon McCary. Sam Gordon of Great Britain getting the silver and a fantastic win. Really super, super winner of his on Sunday. Tops the podium ahead of some real top class sprinters. I guess the gold medal presented. He is the super value and 100 meters champion here at Park City Sports. Yeah, that's the biggest cheer tonight I've heard here for so the presentation. Yeah, Certainly there, for Israel the Olatunde. Atop there, the podium, atop a truly international class field and bright, bright things in the future for this 20-year-old sprinter. Jerry, you've been scanning the field events. That men's long jump, we saw that jump from uh, Jack Roach. I'll just go through this, uh, the race one results there. Kieran Daly, 10.41, Dominic Ashwell, his compatriot, 10.52, and Colin Doyle, like we said. Best of the Irish, bronze in the 100 meter at the national championships, 10.54, Chris Abanda, 10.59, Kamjika Anwara, uh, Runo Yavoro, Paul Coslo, and Connor Mori. Yeah, the long jump we saw um, Jack Roach go to 7.85 with that windy jump. Um, it's down to zero on the results, but it, it did pop up as a 2.1 on, on the infield screen. Um, so he is leading the, that long jump as it stands from. Zane Branco with a 7.73 and third as it stands is Sam Kogali with 7.57 you see that men's second race results confirmed on your screen and it's great to see that Irish flag atop the podium is Lola Tunde what a star the Irish in the long jump Shane Howard is going to 7.48 and Sam Healy 7.26 his first round effort. Colin Burke, seven metres flat. And Reese Adamola, 7.51. So Reese sitting in uh, fourth place at the minute. 7.51 with a plus 2.3 wind. So hitting PB territory there if he can just get a legal wind as he goes into uh, the 
final jump so three rounds completed in that one and the order will be rejigged for the men to take their last three jumps yeah we can see the men's shot butters there closest to us are just going through we see john kelly has just unleashed something and dropped to his knees in euphoric celebration so we'll try to update you on what he has just thrown but it looked like it was not an ordinary throw given his reaction there because he looks absolutely over the moon the national champion from Finn Valley yeah, he's certainly a man who's well able to, uh, bottom of your screen. He's certainly well able to celebrate his John Kelly and that looks like a huge throw and if it's a huge throw compared to his PB that could be very very close to the 20 meter mark and that celebration would certainly uh, merit such a throw he's at the 1950s a uh, couple of times now this summer backed up that PB at the Morton Games last week but was pipped to the podium by the national record holder Eric Favors who took uh, indoor and outdoor records this year man from Rohini Shamrock but was uh, beaten to the gold medal at the national championships by John Kelly we would keep an eye on the results of that one to let you know what that throw was measurements taking place there it's old school here Jer. tape absolutely it's most accurate still a couple of minutes away from the start in the women's 800 meters and we'll keep an eye on the shot put and update you as best we can of what's happening there as all these throws are measured we're not getting the live throws updated at the moment in, the, in our results system here as we get the info the favorite is the back of your shot there in the red and black and Dennis the Menace colors even if it's more Super Mario than Dennis the Menace is the kind of motif he goes for in his outfits at Nick Ponzio of Italy the effervescent Californian native Italian parents close to 22 meters Italian indoor record already this year and then looking back towards the track the Cork City Council women's 800 meters field are standing, let's say, behind their marks or behind their blocks. But there are no blocks, of course, for the 800s. They are now on the marks, and from the inside, it is Poland's Eliza Megger. Lane two is shared by Jenna Brommel and Sarah Billings. Lane three is Ellie Sanford of Australia. Lane four is Isabel Boffy. Lane five is share or it's Isabel Boffy and then McKenna Keegan. Then it is Cynthia Anise Thomas. And then Bianca Bartha Kerry of Hungary, Christina Herring of Germany, and Isolt O'Donnell of Ireland. And they're moving through the first 200 metres at quite the pace here. Isolt O'Donnell cutting it out. And there is a fall, and two, three athletes have gone down, unfortunately. One of them is perhaps the race favourite, Isabel Boffy. Just as that waterfall effect came in there, the race is all but over for these athletes, no matter what they run. An athlete like Christina Herring is not going to be giving up this lead. Christina Herring is the tall athlete on the shoulder of the leader there at the moment. She ran two minutes flat just two weeks ago at the German Championships in Berlin. She now looks to have a stranglehold on this race, but Isla O'Donnell cutting out a healthy pace. Number eight just behind, that's Jenna Brommel on the inside, and then number seven is Ellie Sanford. And moving up there, that's Eliza Megger of Poland. She's a 203 athlete at her best, but it looks like Christina Herring, this could be her race to lose right now. She is in command behind the pacemaker, Isla O'Donnell. As they round this bend, there is probably a 30, 40 meter gap back to Isabel Boffy, who we thought would feature here, but that fall all but ending her race. And now Isla O'Donnell steps aside and it is Christina Herring she was the World University Games silver medalist back in 2019 and she is firmly in command here looks to be headed to victory but she's got a lot of athletes for company and right behind her is Ellie Sanford who finished third in the Morton Games the other night the 201 athlete from Australia and look coming around the outside there that is Eliza Megger of Poland who looks to be having the race of her life she, her PB is 203.8 she looks like she could be about to smash that but it is Christina Herring leading as they turn from home. Sarah Billings of Australia also trying to get into it. But it is Christina Herring who we expected would feature strongly. And she is currently pulling away from this field. Germany's Christina Herring stretches to the line. It's going to be just outside two minutes, 202.32. A brilliant run also from Eliza Megger in second of Poland. She looks to have broken her personal best. And it was very, very close for third between the two Australians, Sarah Billings and Ellie Sanford. 
and a big hat tip to all the athletes. Four athletes essentially had their race ended in that pile up after 200 meters and every one of them got up and finished the race. A race, I believe, Ger, all of them will be keen to forget. Absolutely, yeah, when it's when you're on the deck after 200 meters, there's not much more you can do after that, but uh, yeah, brilliant race there from Christina Harry. Just see that fall again here, Cahill on the screen. Just see a bit of stumbling around it. Just kind of came from the front all the way to the back in an absolute pile up, as you said. Like Australia's Ellie Sanford just got a bit shuffled there between the two leaders, came back, slowed up, and then I guess... A domino effect, it went that, all the way back to the back. That led to Isabel Boffy and Cynthia Anise Thomas just basically tripping over her, and then three went down, and the fourth was heavily affected, unfortunately, but they'll be back. There'll be bigger and better days ahead, and thankfully all of the athletes, good to see them. They were all were able to get up and continue running, even if there's a few scratches. Sven Pullman here in the shop with the man from the Netherlands, 2022 at his best. I guess the white flag on that one. So he's looking for your sport. So we don't have live results. Unfortunately, updating us for the minute. There is the Irish record holder, Eric Favors, getting ready to take his throw. As we said, 2007 for national record this year outdoors. Set the national record indoors as well, but. John Kelly did something special in that previous throw. We haven't got the result of it yet, but when we get that updated, we'll let you know as soon as we can. What can Eric Favors do here? The Rahini Shamrock man. Looks good. Gets the white flag. And it looks 18-24. That was there from Pullman, you can see previously. Still on the scoreboard. That could tell us that I think Christian Zimmerman went over 20 metres in the previous because that was what was on the scoreboard when Pullman was taking that put. Let's see what pops up here for Eric Favors if the camera stays on the scoreboard. Here is the national champion. 20 metres for John Kelly in his last throw. Oof. We're not sure exactly the centimetres, but it was beyond 20 metres and that is why he dropped to his knees crying with happiness I would say the national champion as you see PB 1957 that's got to be changed that's some breakthrough there from John Kelly and have two Irish men have thrown 20 meters now and now here they are in the same competition that is well it's a place we've never been before but what a, a place Irish throwing is out of the minute call it's a uh, you know breaking new ground all around here two men over 20 meters let's see could uh, he gets a big embrace from Eric Favors after that uh, throw, but uh, I'm not sure what Eric has thrown so far in this competition. But and it's worth pointing out that the national record for 30 years was 20.04 to Paul Quirk until this year, and Eric Favors broke it. And it looks like John Kelly may well have threatened it, if not broke it. But he's also two men after a 30-year wait have finally gone beyond 20 meters in Irish shot putting. Yeah, through uh, a true miracle mark, it is the 20-meter barrier. There's a few events that have things like that, the sub, sub 10 second 100 metres. 20.14 would be told for John Kelly, and if that's uh, verified, that will be a national record. Has come in from a very unverifiable source, though, so we'll see uh, when we get the results up on the screen. 2011 is up on the board there. 20.15 would be told from a much more credible source. Uh, that is a big national record for John Kelly, and it's great to see Eric Favors embracing him after that previous throw, giving yeah. him the big, uh, put the crown on his head, saying, well done, for now, I'll be coming for you. There's Nick Ponzio. 21.83 at his best, the Italian. Seventh in the World Indoor Championships. It's an Italian indoor record earlier this year, and has quite the sense of style. says throwing is an art form Let's see what sort of splash he can make on the canvas here yeah, he's certainly an artiste himself he loves bringing a bit something a bit extra to the shot but he said being a performer and entertainer big part of it is wanting people to talk about what he's doing that's why he wears a fanny pack when he throws and that's why he wears headbands and why he has that sweet rocking mustache See the women's 800 meter presentation, Christina Herring towering over everyone else when she's off the podium and even more so on it, gets that gold medal around her neck. She is the champion here at the Cork City Sports. Brilliant victory for the German. Next up on track, it's going to be, this is Andrew Litzkowitz. 
former World University Games medalist in 2019, the US thrower. Sends that looks from this unofficial angle to be well beyond the 20 meters. 2071 still on that board there for Nick Ponzio in the last round. We'll be, like I said, we're, we're firing off text messages trying to update and hopefully the, the live results. That's Sam Healy there taking a jump in the long jump. Wind of 1.6, so it will be legal whenever it's measured. I'm sure you get the white flag, actually the pin is being wrecked, so it must be a foul for Sam on that one. The local man. So wind calming down again a little bit, thankfully, when the men's 200 meters are coming up later and the, that women's 400 as well in the sprints. And of course, another two lap tango coming up. Men's 800 meters. You this see the lineup the here on screen, Carl. Fort Ireland men's 800 meters. From the inside, Callum Hurley of Ireland, Rocco Zaman Brown of Ireland, Ben Greenwood of Britain, Sean Dolan of USA, Jonas Rini of Finland, Jai Perret of Australia, Jakub Augustiniak of Poland, Philip Ostrowski of Poland, and then out in lane seven, it's going to be Guy Learmonth from Great Britain. And lane eight will be shared by Ethan Hussey of Britain and Roland Serlis of Ireland. Lots of good names to keep an eye on here. This could be a very close one. And as has often been the case, in terms of form guides, we will look to the Morton Games last weekend because Jai Perrett was in action there, as indeed was Ben Greenwood. And they respectively finished in second and third places. Kyle Langford of Britain took victory there. But there's... A lot of 144, 145 and 146 men in this field. So it'll be very hard to know how this plays out. The conditions seem pretty good. The wind has certainly died down just looking up at the flags. And Jai Parrot will be in the bright green Australian colours. As we see Eric Favors in the shot put circle. Was the Irish record holder until tonight. Can he get it back in the same competition where John Kelly broke it? Out it goes. That with a warm applause from the crowd and a white flag. So we have quite special things happening in that men's shot put competition. It's been a memorable night for Ireland, but back on track. The men's 800 meters is on the track from the inside. Callum Hurley, Rocco Zaman-Brown, Ben Greenwood, Sean Dolan, Younes Rinne, Jai Perrett, Jakub Augustiniak, Philip Ostrovsky, Guy Learmonth, Ethan Hussey and Roland Serlis. Guy Learmonth is the fastest in the field on personal best with that 144.73. But a bad bout of COVID last year scuppered his Olympic chances and he's still trying to get back to his best, 147, his best so far this season. As they come up here, passing 200 metres, field goes through in about 24 seconds or so, so it's a good healthy pace being laid down. And it is Sean Dolan of USA, the Villanova stu student, fifth at the NCAA Championships, who's leading at the moment, but Jai Parrott of Australia sitting comfortably on his shoulder right now. And we know Jai Parrott produced a great performance last weekend, Jer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Kyle Lankford just getting the better of him on Saturday, but Parrott looks comfortable there sitting in. Roland Serlis coming through towards the bell. 50 seconds just on the clock, 51, 52. So perfectly paced for a good quick time here, Kyle. They'll head down the back straight. They'll have a little bit of a wind in their face. The flags are lying limp, but certainly all to play for there out front. Yeah, Sean Dolan looks in the perfect position here, but he's going to be left in front when the pacemaker steps aside. And Jai Parrott, as it was at the Morton Games the other night, is tracking and waiting. And he'll be, he finished second the other night, he'll be trying to turn that silver into gold here. Guy Learmouth making a big move there up in the turn, up into third at the moment. He looks like he might be ready to unleash some, but at the moment, it's the American, Sean Dolan of Villanova, racing on that NCAA circuit. He knows how to race, but he's got a big challenger here from Australia's Jai Parrott, who ranges up to his shoulder with 100 to go but at the moment it looks like Dolan has found something extra Learmouth's going to try and come down the X side and then it is Rina of Finland coming up the inside it's so close and it is Philip Ostrovsky coming down but it is I take it the day after 4th of July and he's celebrating again for the Americans the Villanova students 
takes victory 146 96. Yeah, brilliant race there from Sean Bowen. He sat in with the pacemaker, he led it all the way effectively, uh, went with the pace. 52 53 through the 400 and took it home took the win a very strong finish there from philip ostrovsky as well got himself in a really good position to the pole he's a 146 89 man at his best so not too far away from that 146 97 the clock is saying now for sean dolan 146 38 at his best not too far away from it here in blustery conditions in cork but takes down the win will be on the podium getting that gold medal from philip ostrovsky and as you see there, Jai Paris. Yunus Rinna went the, the brave man's route there, the 13 time Finnish champion down lane one, but he just didn't have the legs to get past 21 year old Sean Dole and a bright, bright future ahead. Or sorry, Philip Ostrovsky, was it? It was indeed, yeah, number seven on his bib there. Yes. The pole in the sleeves. Back the gap the was there if he had the gears, but in the end, Sean Dolan just had one too many gears for everyone else. Indeed, indeed. there's. with the winner now on the 800 meters sponsored by uh, sport ireland sean dolan uh, sean congratulations that was a pretty impressive performance by you here in cork this evening uh, describe uh, your your performance here for us yeah it was a good one um had a rough one got next to the trip at more than a mile so just want to come back and you know do my best to win and compete with some of the best guys in europe I'm from the famed Villanova uh, University, of course, and there is a Cork connection. You're coached by the great Marcus O'Sullivan, who would have competed in many Cork City sports down the years. Yeah, you know, Marcus and I had a plan to come in and do some stuff post-season, and it's an amazing trip, and big shout-out to Charlie Diamond and his family, let me stay with him, so, yeah, keep hoping to keep the Villanova tradition alive. Good conditions here tonight, and what was the atmosphere like for you? Oh, it was awesome. I could hear noise all around the track, so totally amazing environment. Are we back to us again? I hope so. Well done, Sean. Thank you so much. And we will echo that sentiment. Well done, Sean. And I'm sure Mr. Marcus O'Sullivan, the head coach at Villanova, had an influence in him visiting the hometown of Cork. He said he's coaching him, in fact, so yes. slight influence. Major influence. Back over to that men's shot book competition. That is Sven Pohlman now, in fact. The one thing we are sure of is that John Kelly has broken the national record. Just by how much, we're unsure, but certainly he is the man at the moment for the Irish shot put. Providing Eric Favors doesn't do something magic in his later jump. So we're into the last round there, the men's shot put competition. Roach there in the Irish of long record term holder leader of that one. Eric Favors. Just a quick look at the, uh, the live results to tell you how that one is going in terms of updates. Put your hands together. You want to see him over the 20 meter mark. See Eric Favors back in that shot put circle. We're hoping to get him over 20 meters as well as the infield announcer echoes that sentiment. I think he's the former national record holder as it stands as of tonight. Finn Valley's John Kelly with a huge throw, but Eric Favors just puts his hands in the air to wave to the crowd in appreciation. He's a red flag on that one. He just steps out over the front. Not happy with it, but we saw him with a great cheer and celebration for John Kelly in the previous round to say well done son great throw this evening yeah amazing stuff James Kelly into the circle in Australia, said based in Sweden now over there with the not sure of the same coach but in around the same group as Daniel Stahl the man mountain of the discus John Kelly certainly trying to turn himself into that in terms of Irish throwing and there he goes another big throw and he just leaves the circle and he claps at the crowd with a red flag. He doesn't care. He's over the moon. National record. John a John national Kelly. record here for John Kelly. What a performance. What a breakthrough he's having this year. That 1957 was a huge breakthrough. But over the 20 meter mark and over that national record, we see Sean Dolan getting crowned the champ here at the gold medal. Gold that, Nova. Uh, that men's long jump competition is as it stands out front. Jack Roach with that 785 that we caught on camera earlier on this evening. Uh, he is sitting in the lead from Zane Branco, 773. And it is Sam Kogali still in third. And I'm delighted to say we have official confirmation. The results system has sprung to life. 
And let's start with the headline news, for especially from an Irish perspective. John Kelly, 2016 officially in that third round, an Irish record. And Eric Favors has also gone, that is beyond his old Irish record, 2011 for fourth place, just behind a competition of outstanding quality from the two Irishmen. In second, it was USA's Andrew Liskowitz, 2057. And as expected, the Italian Nick Ponzio has reigned supreme. Stadium record the other night at the Morton Games. He doesn't quite throw that far here. 2147 is the stadium record here. He has thrown 2071 to take victory. There it is, the official results. You yeah. got it just after we got it. Safe to say that is the best best uh, Irish shot put competition we've ever seen on Irish soil or anywhere else. It's unbelievable. Two men break the old Irish record. Eric Favors responding in the next round, but John Kelly had thrown 20.16 metres to break his national record, which was still at 20.07 from earlier this year. Favors comes out in the next round, chucks it out to 20.11, not quite, but wow, this is really, really exciting stuff for Irish throws and field events in general for going forward. What can these two men push that record out to over this summer and going forward? Yeah, 20 metres. I remember it's funny, I interviewed Nick Ponzio earlier this year in Madrid as a man who's up there with the world's best threatening that 22 metre barrier now he said that when he got to 20 metres it was such a big moment for him and that really was the shift in his career that made him really professionalise his old setup. and uh, I would say John Kelly and Eric Favors are already there but now that they've both gone beyond 20 metres in the last month or two um, when you count Eric Favors and have done so on the same evening here in a very special night of throwing in Cork they will certainly have the platform to build off as they look towards 2024 and perhaps qualifying for those Paris Olympics. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, it's a huge uh, monkey off your back to break any of those milestone performances as well. So now they can just throw for big numbers rather than thinking about that 20 metres. But you see the 800 metre results on screen. Christina Herring, comfortable win there, 202.31 from Eliza Megger, 203.53. And Sarah Billings, 203.63. Jenna Bromwell, the best of the Irish, 205.04 for the uh, national silver medalist from Jenner Brown from Emerald AC. But yeah, those two men in the shot put, I suppose uh, John Kelly had to follow in the footsteps of favours once he broke the 20 metre barrier. John would have, I'm sure, been self-confident enough to, to know that he could do it himself. But once you see one Irish man do it, you know that it's very, very possible. And now we've seen two men do it in the one night. Certainly the likes of James Kelly, John's brother, uh, will be fully inspired to push on towards that magic mark as well. And who knows where it could end up, as we say, after uh, getting that monkey off your back it's like breaking a, a two meter high jump as a young lad or a seven meter long jump or a sub two minute 800 it's uh, it could go anywhere from there we see that men's 800 sean dolan the man with the core connection coached by marcus o'sullivan 146 97 philip ostrovsky 147 14 and jai parrot 147 38 just ahead of rocco zaman brown a new name for the irish fans he now represents uh, ireland man uh, I think born and raised in Great Britain but of Irish heritage takes the fourth place here yeah Zaman Brown 21 years old bright future ahead for him as well next up on track it's going to be the BAM Ireland women's 3000 meters and two big names one big name internationally none other than two time Olympic 800 meter champion Castor Semenya will be taking to the track and a big name for Ireland there she is number five Sarah Healy and smashing the underage records as she progresses up through the ranks to 21 year old and on paper they should be quite evenly matched here Sarah Healy an 852 performer at her best Castor Semenya an 854 performer but there are athletes in here quicker than both of them and as we said it generally goes to start lists in order of personal best well it does for this one anyway Jenny Nesbitt is the quickest in the field of Great Britain 844 her best Verity Ockenden also 846 her compatriot and then Australia's Izzy Bat Doyle 851 her best and Sarah Healy and Castor Semenya as we see that the latter part of this field 20 athletes in total will be going to the line here for this BAM Ireland's women 3000 meters and it is the local lad Reese Adamola he looks pleased with that steps out of the pit gets the white flag Looks beyond the 8750 mark. And just to update you on what's happening on the current status in that men's long jump. Just so much happening here. It is still Jack Roach with that 785 who leads the way from Zane Branco with 773. And then in third place, Sam Kagali with 757 ranked the sixth round. But we'll concentrate back on the track for the time being because. 
the women's 3000 meters is underway the bam ireland women's 3000 meters and there's an athlete here really the headline attraction of the cork city sports the 2022 edition is in the middle of the pack there castor semenya of south africa number six she's a name known all around the world for her exploits over 800 meters was unbeatable for so long and is now for reasons I won't need to explain probably to any viewer competing at longer distances over 3,000 meters and 5,000 meters she originally dropped down to 200 meters back in 2020 trying to qualify for the Tokyo Olympics and she has since reverted back up the distances and she's now going to try to become a 5k runner Castor Semenya I spoke to her yesterday for quite a bit she was in great form she was uh I wouldn't say complaining, but she was kind of laughing about the European weather we have here in Cork. You know, it was 25 odd degrees back in South Africa in their winter, and here we are with our, our 15 and 16 degree summer jar. But she was came in, flew into Cork on Friday, and uh, very much got a warm welcome. And I think that's one of the athletes, things all the athletes internationally speak about when they come to Cork is just how warm the welcome is. It's something that really makes them want to come back year after year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I suppose coming in on Friday as well, she gets to settle in for a couple of days as well before the race, get used to that weather. Um, but like I said, uh, you know, what an established and accomplished athlete is the world star on the World Athletic stage. And here she is competing against the best of the Irish and beyond. So Sarah Healy sitting out there in front at the minute. Um, let's see what she can do here. For Guan, the pacemaker, cutting out a healthy early pace here ahead of Sarah Healy, then back in third. That's Stella Ruto of Romania. And then at in fourth essentially third is Jenny Nesbitt the quickest in the field from Britain she'll be looking for a quick time here the Cardiff athlete she's a 15-17 she's run already this year for 5k which is a, a strong strong time and then just looking behind her I think that's Georgia Hansen of Australia sitting back in fifth I just see Jack Roach there down on the long jump runway he is the long time leader in the event and he has gone out to a big one again but he gets the red flag he just looks down at the board in frustration but he is holding on to that lead still at 7.85 from Zane Branco. Yeah, we're going to be getting a good indication here of just how quick they're running in this women's 3,000 metres. Castor Semenya just let a gap open there between her and Izzy Bat Doyle of Australia. And Izzy Bat Doyle has let a gap open to the rest of the field. Georgia Hansen in fifth at the moment. They pass 1,000 metres in 2.54, I think it was. This is a strong, strong pace, so running just outside 8.40 pace. And just to mark your card from an Irish perspective, Sarah Healy's under-23 record, Irish record, is 8.52.63. So that looks under serious threat here. As they, But it's still early days, and at the moment it is our pacemaker, Anise Borgwan, leading it out from Sarah Healy. Back in third, that's Stella Ruto of Romania. And then there's a Jenny Nesbitt is sitting in from Britain, and then just behind her, Australia's Georgia Hansen. This is her second race of the year, Australia's Georgia Hansen. So I'm sure some injury problems might have delayed the start of her season, but she looks to have gone out strongly here, surely confident in her fitness. She went 4.14 for 1500 recently, did Georgia Hansen. But if there is a favourite, perhaps it is Jenny Nesbitt, because she's been in great form of late as I said 15-17 for 5k already this year she ran the 2018 Commonwealth Games did Jenny Nesbitt she's sitting in fourth place there in that New Balance kit on the inside and then quite the gap opening to an athlete we thought would feature strongly Izzy Bat Doyle who's probably about 10 15 metres off this pack at the moment and then it is number 12 running with her that's Sarah Aston of Great Britain and perhaps they can work together in 6th and 7th and try and bring themselves back to this field but they're coming up this is the halfway mark 1500 meters and it's 421 422 so we're still looking at something in and around it just outside 840 and now Sarah Healy would be absolutely delighted that Stella Ruto of Romania has gone to the front and has kept this pace strong yeah absolutely so pacemaker gone Sarah Healy would not want to do any of the work here uh, especially in, well it's quite calm out here now but it's slightly breezy conditions that we've seen all night perfect temperature now for this race out there I'd say those girls are happy out with the, the conditions but Sarah Healy just sitting in and she will be happy that Ruto has taken this pace on and she can just draft off her coming into the home straight here again she's going to see three laps to go um, with uh, Jenny Nesbitt just sitting in behind her followed by Georgia Hansen that gap has grown again back to the two at least behind him there is Bat Doyle and Sarah Aston they're going to have a bit of work to do to try and work back towards the lead pack there are four women clear here Stella Ruto comes through the line 5.16 on the clock from Sarah Healy from Jenny Nesbitt and Georgia Hansen 
Yeah, it's all to play for here. Sarah Healy has been in great form already this year, and there's a, just a bit of a gap opening now to Jenny Nesbitt. And Sarah Healy really has such a strong aerobic engine. Even though she's run 202 for 800 and has a wicked finishing kick, she's also run so well since she was a kid at cross country, 5K, fifth in the European under 23 cross country, just shy of a medal on home turf in Dublin before Christmas. And that gap is really opening now to Jenny Nesbitt. And if you're Jenny Nesbitt, you really have to dig in here because this is the key part of the race. This is two kilometers and it's passed in about 5.52. So they're well on pace to smash, for Sarah Healy to smash that Irish under 23 record she ran 8.53 indoors and 4.02 for 1500 outdoors she'd have been disappointed to lose the other night at the Morton Games to Lizzie Bird the British steeplechaser as good a form as Bird is in but she looks like she's going to get one over so far on the British rivals here because Sarah Healy is pulling clear of third and fourth and it is Stella Ruto of Romania leading it out against her it looks like it could be a head to head here over this final two laps 6.27 on the clock with 800 meters to run we're going to be looking at something in the 840s Ger. yeah sir he looks comfortable there in second she's just burning a hole into Stella Ruto's shoulder blades there at the minute sitting right in on her heels and she'll be hoping to do as little as work as possible and try and unleash a kick towards the end as you said 202 over 800 402 this year that huge personal best over 15 so she has certainly got a lot of speed in those legs but what can Stella Ruto do over this last 600 meters or so to break Sarah Healy and take down the title here at the Cork City Sports I'm sure there'll be some fans of Castor Semenya all around the world tuning in just to update you Castor is about 100 meters at the moment behind Sarah Healy so she's going to be outside nine minutes she was hoping to break 850 here that's not going to happen but Castor just coming back from recent back injury and she said things are still not quite 100% but good to see her running and competing here nonetheless but at the moment with 500 meters to run we'll concentrate on the race up front because Sarah Healy is getting a perfect lead into this from Stella Ruta of Romania who's going to win it in the end though Sarah Healy has great 1500 meter speed she's run 402 already this year she smashed Sonia Sullivan's Irish under 23 record but we have an attack from behind it's not on screen at the moment but Georgia Hansen of Australia is starting to close in on them working back to form after a long absence through the early half of the year but Georgia Hansen has the two leaders in her sights but I think there's another gear in Sarah Healy here as they swing round this penultimate bend Stella Ruta continues to lead from Sarah Healy but Sarah Healy the 21 year old has never left her slipstream and she looks ready to strike Georgia Hansen continues to get closer but she'll need to find something miraculous over this last 250 to reel in these two leaders it's Romania Stella Ruto and the crowd is getting loud now behind Sarah Healy the Dubliner down in Lee side is getting a great reception and she looks ready to unleash something big here and there goes Sarah Healy the crowd is on their feet in the home straight this is the kick we're used to the 21 year old Sarah Healy changes gears and kicks by she's headed off to the world championships later this week where she'll be competing over 1500 meters and Sarah Healy is showing her class showing her vast range of gears and she is powering to the line she is going to obliterate the Irish under 23 record stumbling for the line she's over it just just the torso is what matters and her shoulders were across the line in 847.34 to break the Irish under 23 record by five seconds Sarah <laughs> timed I would say that fall to perfection Ger I'm sure she would like to have not have fallen at all but if you're going to fall that's just about the best way to do it absolutely just got herself there shoulders and torso across the line so the stop clock stopped and she made sure to shimmy the rest of her body across it she wasn't too sure on the rules she hasn't had to do too many dip finishes in her life before but hopefully the record is the only thing that's broken there for Sarah Healy she looks fine she's just winded on the track and she's in a bit of shock as to how that race finished but a a brilliant, brilliant performance for her. You can hear the, the gasp from the crowd was as loud as that roar with 120 to go when she ripped by Stella Ruto and showed that pace she has. But she is back on her feet. She's getting a bit of water from the uh, the officials and she's happy out with that brilliant performance. 8.47 8 on the clock. Um, and she won't want to see that finish line picture anytime soon. But the main thing is cross the line in first place, just as we see here, just reaching a little bit for it wanted a little bit too much and just ran out of legs just about at the right time we saw it at the world junior championships a couple of years ago two kenyans coming storming on the home straight and one literally fell correctly as as uh, andrew Coskerin did the other day just barely fell at the right time to get the win on the dip but uh 
Sarah Healy would not want to finish the race that way, but she'd be delighted with that time and certainly uh, barring any scrapes and bruises, she'll be happy out going off to Oregon for the World Championships. She knows the wheels are there, as you said, burnt Stella Ruto there in that last 100 metres uh, and takes the win here at Cork City Sports. Yeah, brilliant stuff from Sarah Healy. She actually did hit the ground before the line. I think the momentum just almost was like rugby. There was no second movement, but the momentum carried her over the try line. A br brilliant, brilliant run by Sarah Healy. Five seconds she takes off her own Irish under-23 record. Yeah, it's a fall like that, you'd be hoping for a wet track that you could bounce off and carry yourself across the line with a little bit less of a carpet burn, but uh, she'd be patched up and ready to go uh, off to Oregon to take on the world's best. We see Michael Bowler on the pole vault runway. We're going to see uh, Ireland's best in this pole vault come up later on as well with Sean Roth, man well clear of 520 this year uh, Matthew Callan and uh, Connor Callan, Matthew Callan Keane and Connor Callan taking on that one as well national champion and silver medalist so there's two men uh, clear of the five meters in that pole vault on PBs yeah, Sean Roth as I said Matthew Callan Keane and Connor Callan and Shane Power and Joshua Fitzgerald in fact, we're, we're missing our other five-meter man on our live results anyway, so we just have to keep an eye on whether he is in the field or not. But Michael Bowler taking his time there on the road, waiting for that wind to calm down. With the winner of the 3,000 meters for women, and what a race! Give it up for Sarah Healy, ladies and gentlemen. Sarah. Uh, that was some race to hold off um, Stella Ruto. Uh, just describe your feelings coming into the closing because there was some battle, wasn't it? I, I felt good until maybe the last like, 300. And I thought I'd have a good kick, but she started to speed up. And I got better weight. And, uh, when I went, I felt good, but then the last. 40 meters. I was like, this is not going to be pretty. That's never happened to me before, but um, I'm actually happy with it because, you know, it just means that we gave it my everything. Were you concerned that you didn't actually make the line? You were looking uh, at the line when you fell there. I'm not sure like, what the rule was. I was like, do your feet have to go over it or what's the story? But then I think I was okay. I got my nose over it. So. Just got a little scrape there, but you're okay, are you? Yeah, no, I'm totally fine, obviously. When you're happy with the results, you never really feel it, so, yeah, no, I'm really happy. And thanks for all the support. Definitely uh, kept me going the last 100 metres. I was like, can't fall now. Everyone's watching. It was a fantastic time as well. Yeah, I actually am enjoying exactly what time I ran. But I think it's a PB and, uh, yeah, no, I'm really happy with it. Give the audience a, a great race here tonight, Sarah. Well done. Congratulations. Sarah Healy, ladies and gentlemen. Well done to Sarah Healy. She's been... Hard knock well life done, of hockey, I'm sure, has toughened her up for plenty of falls like that and getting clattered across the legs. So as you can see, well, she, she described it perfectly there, though, Jerra. When you, when you run well, you don't tend to feel the, the pain of such falls. Ends 3,000 yeah. meters. And just the result has officially come through. Sarah was one there. We can update you, Sarah. Not that you're watching right now, but 8.46.14 is the Irish under 23 record. Stella Ruta second, 8.47.36. Georgia Hansen of Australia rounds out the podium at 8.47.67. And for those wondering, Castor Semenya of South Africa, a two time Olympic champ, 9.11.71, down in eighth place. Great to see Castor back on track. And she'll be going back to South Africa now after the warmest of welcomes she's had here in Cork. And I think she's races in Berlin and Zagreb coming up before she rounds out her season and she looks towards 2022 but back on track it's the John Buckley Sports men's 3000 meters and anyone who's done a bit of shopping for running goods in Cork, Munster or indeed Ireland I'm sure knows all about John Buckley Sports the, the great running shop as they pass through 400 meters they are moving fast here that looked like around 60 61 seconds and the main man from Leeside, the Glen Gareth star, Gara McElhinney, 21 years old. In many ways, his career has mirrored the athlete we saw in the preceding race, Sarah Healy. Both of those athletes won European under-20 medals. 
um, in Bora, Sweden, back in 2019. Both of those athletes went there to win gold. They did not. They won silver and bronze, respectively. And both of those athletes have taken an absolute wrecking ball to Irish records at youth under 20 and now under 23 level. And I've no doubt they'll both be doing it at senior level in the years to come. But Dara McElhenney here is targeting the meeting record, which is 838.99, held by Craig Mottram, dating back to 2005, the great... Well, I'm glad to be joined now by uh, Rhys Adamola, who is third in the long jump for men. Uh, Rhys, of course, uh, represents Leavale. Um, Rhys, uh, an under-20 world standard, 7 metres 28. You must be absolutely thrilled with that. Thrilled. Um, yeah, just trying to knock it down in the basics. And, uh, yeah, not too long ago, it's basketball over here, and it's just been a dream to compete out in this. So, yeah, I'm out here lovely as well. Like, so, makes the other one. Yeah, your home, your home venue tonight, and the crowd really got behind you there. So obviously, it's a fantastic uh, experience uh, to jump here in this track tonight. Yeah, yeah, no, 100. I've always jumping good here. Like uh, my coach can even vouch for that. But yeah, no, love out here. Yeah. So what's next for you? Uh, under 20s now. Um, juniors next. It's many o'clock now. It's the juniors. So yeah, just do my best though. And yeah, well done tonight, race. Well done. Great stuff there, and back on track, I can update you, Darren McElkinney has broken well clear of the field here, and he's gone through the first kilometre in 2.34, it looked like, unofficially, so that's 7.42 pace. As I said, Darren McElhenney's as ideas about the meet record of 7.38, it would be a huge, huge performance, as great a form as he's been in already this year, it would be an absolutely colossal performance by the youngster, the 21-year-old, now running for UCD previously for Bantry AC, grew up in Glengariff, not too far from here, and he's coming through here, approaching the halfway point, he's coming up to 1500, so that'll give us a good indication of how quick they're running, and he has drawn 40 metres clear right now of James West of Britain, and to give you an idea, James West finished second at the British Championships over 5k, behind world indoor medalist Mark Scott just a couple of weeks ago, and Dara McElhenney has gone through 1500 metres in about 3 50, 351. He's headed for something around 8, 740. If, Jer, he can hold it together, but it's a big if. Yeah, absolutely. 350 through the first 1500. I mean, there's a, most people in Ireland be happy to do that for the, the first half of this race, but Dara looks absolutely supreme out there at the pacemaker. Uh, Janu Kalaf doing a great job with them. Two of them are tearing away from this field. They've got about 70 metres now on the field. As you said, James West is absolutely no slouch. Silver medalist of the British Championships. An absolute top class performer as this field is stacked full of them. But now the pacemaker steps off the track. Darren McElhinney gets a roar from the home crowd here in the home straight at MTU in Cork. And he is trucking away down towards the, the line with three laps to go. What can he do here? Can he get well under that or towards that 740 mark? 350 as he said through the 1500 and he looks to be flying still but these men are going to be working together behind him. Nick Griggs amongst them there, another absolute superstar of Irish athletics but Darren McElhinney has 70 metres on the field now. Yeah, Nick Griggs I'm sure he broke one of Darren McElhinney's records indoors this year. He broke the Irish under 20 record clocking 757. He'll be looking to go well under 8 minutes here having run a 358 mile. They both ran a 358 mile in Morton Games the other night but Darren McElhinney is showing right now I suppose he's the king and he's showing the prince Nick Griggs he's about 80 meters clear of him at the moment Nick Griggs sitting in the pack but that is a pack absolutely loaded with quality as we said James West has run 338 and 1500 twice this year and he's currently leading that pack but Darren McElhenney with 900 meters to run is really powering along here at quite a pace he is absolutely skipping off this surface here at the MTU Athletic Stadium in Cork the local lad you probably suspected he was going to deliver something special and right now he has about an 80 meter lead 538 on the clock it's probably going to be in the low 740s but if Darren McElhenney can produce the kick we have come to know and love from him over the years he could yet dip under 740 Jer. yeah 13 seconds on the field there according to my watch he's up to about 90 meters of a lead here so this is really an absolute exhibition from Darren McElhinney here as you said the man from Cork he's got a hometown crowd here he'll have 
heroes. He'll be a hero to many people in this stand, young and old, and they're going to cheer, be cheering him home. Daryl McElhinney, he's got the whole back straight clear now, and he is still trucking away from James West, still leading that chase back. They're all bunching up, waiting to strike there, but they're running for silver as it stands. Daryl McElhinney coming around the bend here into the home straight call. What can he do? What's going to be on the clock? I think we're looking at the fastest ever Irish 3000 metres by an under 23 athlete from her because he holds the record already at 745.91 which he ran indoors and I think Darren McElhinney is going to destroy that if he can hold this together for one more lap. He comes now up to the home straight. It's going to be 642 on the clock as he goes through. He's running about 62 seconds a lap so it's going to be very very close to that Irish under 23 record. He already broke the Irish under 23 5000 metre record earlier this year running 13-17 in Belgium the pack are starting to kick and it is Emile Caris who has broken out of that pack from Great Britain he leads ahead of Eric Speakman of New Zealand but they are not going to catch McElhenney they are not even going to get near McElhenney as fast as they're moving behind because McElhenney powers down that back straight the 21 year old with 200 meters to run 7-13 on the clock can he kick how hard can he kick Darren McElhenney will we'll be going to the European Championships in Munich later this summer where he hopes to do something special and really step it up at senior level but he has absolutely ripped a senior international class field torn them asunder here on home turf in Cork the Rebel is absolutely rousing the crowd as he powers to the finish Darren McElhenney the fastest Irish junior ever over 5,000 metres he's now the fastest Irish under 23 ever at 3,000 metres breaks his own record 7.44 Four flat on the clock, Darren McElhenney streets ahead of the rest. Absolute class act, Darren McElhenney there. And tell you, Nick Grace came through in about 7:53 there as well. So it'll be another big PB for him and uh, possibly an under 20 record. We'll have to just check that one up, but. Darren McElhinney, no doubting the champion out front. What a performance. He went with the pacemaker, and once the pacemaker stepped off, he just took it on by the scruff of the neck on his own, as he said. 350 through that first 1500 with help, and there he is, spent on the track. It was a huge push and a huge effort coming from the chase back in that last lap, but the class of Darren McElhinney, there was no doubt he was going to hold on and takes that title, takes that national under 23 record down with style. Yeah, I think some of the guys in behind perhaps heard the talk of maybe attacking that 740 barrier in Craig Mottram's record and probably said no thank you don't fancy that um, but Darren McElhinney yeah I think some of them probably could have got a lot closer to him if they were willing to go with it but it would have taken a lot of courage to go with that first half to go through at 740 pace and then go after it without a pacemaker but Darren McElhinney it ended up in a solo run no doubt he could have run a lot closer to 740 if he had a bit of company or perhaps even higher caliber competition but no one else was willing to go with him no one else was able to go with him we should say and Dara McElhenney reigns supreme in his home county absolutely backs up that 5000 meter national title in absolute style down in his home county as he said uh, takes down the title here the John Buckley Sports men's 3000 meters in style we're going to have a bit of a long jump podium come up. We heard Reese Adamola there uh, getting interviewed by the infield commentator. And uh, Reese, as he said, uh, super, super talented. There he is getting his bronze medal. The man left to your screen, 19 year old, Leave LAC athlete. With a uh, big jump into the 750s, but uh, wind illegal, unfortunately. But as he said, he's a super accomplished high jumper as well. So he is certainly a, a star to watch. And on the podium at his first Cork City Sports in Branco in second position and Jack Roach is going to be crown champion here 7.85 to take down that men's long jump quick update on that men's pole vault which we saw a quick glimpse of earlier on as well Sean Roth is the only man clear of 4.70 so far Michael Bowler, Matthew Canlon Keenan and Shane Power have attempts left at that height. They all went clear at uh, 4.55. Connor Camp. Well, um, Dara, congratulations. The winner of the 3,000 metres for men sponsored by John Buckley Sports. I mean, that was a performance for the ages here in Cork this evening. 
Yeah, thanks very much. Um, obviously, obviously, I'm delighted with it in front of the home crowd to, to be able to be able to win it first of all. Um, and then, yeah, look, obviously, I'm pretty happy with the time as well, 724 is going. And it's the second PB from the No, I think, like, probably, maybe I'll make a night with a bit more bodies around me. I would be able to go a bit quicker, but I suppose I can work from the pace as well. He was brilliant. And he brought me to an extra country meters as well, so I wouldn't have been able to do it without him, so I'm delighted with that. That's great to hear. There's more in you. Uh, it's a new one, the 23 record, is it? Right? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it was 747, 149. Uh, I'd around 745 in the which was a new record. But yeah, I was delighted to get there to it as well. And, yeah, I think I gave it everything, like, everything that I could. I suppose it was hard on my own. We lost like three, three and a half laps with everybody. I was just trying to get to the level, like, still going to and see what I do. I think I'd probably close about 661. But either way, like, you know, I just wanted to almost give me one person to cheer about it. Tactically, you feel you got it spot on here this evening? Yeah, I think all things considered, I wouldn't change anything, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, look, I just went with the pace, obviously, from the goal, and then um, probably didn't expect to put a gap in the field like I did. And when I had it then, I was just trying to, trying to hold it as much as I could. And as I say, get to the bell with, with a bit left, and then trying to go as hard as I could. So, yeah, no, I'm just finally, before I get your presentation, you were roared on there. I mean, the crowd, the, the atmosphere was uh, absolutely amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, listen, that's what it's all about. I mean, it's rare enough that we that were able to put on from the home crowd, do you know what I mean? So, like, for me, as soon as the date was released by the, by the City Sports Committee, I was on it, like, uh, on it straight away. So, um, and yeah, like, obviously, it's been in the diary now for a while, and delighted to have the form. Well done, Dar. Congratulations. And so say all of us. Well done, Dara. Absolutely delighted to put on a big show, he says, in front of the home crowd here. So once the, the meet was announced once again, he was first name on the ticket, or at least he wanted to be. So happy out, and like we said, that brilliant under-23 Irish record for Darren McElhinney. Another um, update on the men's pole vault. Sean Roth has gone clear of 481. Michael Bowler clear of 470. So he's the only man left in the competition with Sean Roth. Sean Roth is, of course, though well clear of five metres at his best. You see the line up here for the men's. 200 metre race one coming up very shortly. Kahalok, Kemjika on Wera, we saw him in 100 metres earlier on. And Anasa Jabud won a world bronze medalist in 2015, Olympic finalist in 2016. So an absolute unbelievable athlete when at his best. As is Leon Reid, Commonwealth bronze medalist 2018. He'll be enough to Commonwealth Games again soon. Uh, Toby Harris goes in five outs in Hugo McGee in a Madden and Adam Murphy in a Madden of course took a bronze medal at the 400 metres at the national championships a couple of weeks ago and has gone sub 21 seconds windy in the past we can read of course 2027 20, at his best you see Eric Speakman on the podium there for third place 750.19 for his 3k effort Emil Kieres of Great Britain 748.92 for second place and the winner all right Dara McElhinney hometown hero creating magic memories for everyone in this stadium here tonight storming around he gets an absolute roar from the fans here in Cork that Irish under 23 record 744.01 and looking further down the results a result we didn't even notice at the time he was sitting in the pack but we we need to talk about the 17-year-old Nick Griggs because he's run 753.40. You may not have noticed the call, but I did, of course, mention it at the time. Nick Griggs, 753. Brilliant stuff. I didn't notice that, Ger. <laughs> I wasn't, Ger, I wasn't listening to you. If anything, you're not going to be paying attention to me. Do you know what you're that is, Ger? But do you know what that is? I'll tell you what that is, Ger. That's an Irish under-20 record. It certainly is. It, he broke his own record. Well, actually, Darren McElhenney technically held the outdoor record. Lex Ireland still lists outdoor records and indoor records separately. But I believe the accepted practice now at global level and I'm assuming Lex Ireland level is that you set a record indoors in a track event, it counts as the overall or outright, I should say, world or record. Either way, no other Irish under 20 in history has broken eight minutes for 3,000 metres. And Nick Riggs has now run seven seconds under it. Unbelievable. He ran 757 indoors, and he's now run 753 outdoors. Darren McElhenney, previously the fastest Irish under 20 outdoors at 801, and now it's Mr. Griggs, 753. Michael Bowler just taking a second attempt there at 481. 
as I said there, Carl, like unbelievable 753. And you know what, Nick Riggs, he still won't be happy with that performance. When he sees anyone ahead of him, he's not going to be happy. Um, so 17 years of age, 753 for the 3000. And it's the world is his oyster, as it is for Dara McElhinney, going from strength to strength in every race. He can do it any way he pleases, and uh, a huge performance here in front of the home crowd at MTU Cork at this BAM Cork City Sports. We see race one, as we said, of that men's 200 metres. We've got Locke on Moera, Jawadwana, Reed, Harris, McGee, Madden, and Murphy. See so if we can get Leon Reed coming back to some of his better form, but outside him, Toby Harris is going very, very well. And so Jabawana has a good bit of work to do, but he's coming through nice and strongly there. The tall man in lane three. Jabawana there looks to be in the lead as we're coming to the home straight. It is going to be Jabawana. Leon Reed finishes strongly as always. What can he do here? Can he get back at the 2015 bronze medalist? He's going to be very close. He's going to get there on the line. He dips 20.82. Leon Reed takes the win ahead of Anasa Jabawana in second place. 20.82 unofficially. A brilliant, brilliant run there from Leon Reed. 0.6 positive on the clock it is legal that'll be a big season's best for Leon Reid 20.20 uh, a while back in Belfast earlier this year but that is more like it from Leon Reid he'll be heading into Commonwealth Games in a couple of weeks time with much more confidence much more spring in a step and run that the way he usually does strong 100 meters and then a very strong second 100 meters but you just get a look at the replay here you can see coming down the home straight and Nasa Jabulwana was certainly giving him a lot of work to do the man from South Africa was away and clear probably at 110, 120 metres into it but confident and composed was Leon Reid coming down the home straight took that third spot and Toby or first spot and Toby Harris there in third but yeah, a message I would want in second 0 0.6 plus wind there so much lighter breeze than Leon was helped with earlier in the 100 metres where he ran 10.46 with a 2.9 tailwind I'm sure he wouldn't have been too happy with his run there but that looked a lot better a lot like the ne Re Leon Reed we know and fingers crossed he's getting over that L5 severe back injury kept him out for five weeks he said but certainly looking back to his old self there and going in the right direction ahead of that Commonwealth Games later on this month now in Birmingham Birmingham indeed yeah. I doubting myself there it yeah, like, feels like the Commonwealth just go between Glasgow and Birmingham all the time even though they don't no, they go to the Gold Coast the other time get back up again Melbourne Enjoy that one, 2006. The best, in my opinion. Certainly. See Michael Bowler going for a PB here, of 481, 475. His current PB. And he's up against Sean Roth in this one, the longtime leader of the event. So you see Bowler just refusing on that one. You go back down the runway, trying to get another attempt in. You can go near the uh, the box or break the line of the bar, so he'll still be clean to go again. He just fiddles with the wind gauge or the wind uh, sock rather to see what way it's going. He is in second place in this pole vault as it stands. To see a nice line of the, the finish there. Toby Harry's down on the floor, chatting to Leon Reed. See that packed stand here. And in fact, all around the, the grass banks, there's good crowds here, good weather, perfect conditions for athletics. Up next in race two. We have got an absolutely stacked field here in this one. Bo Bismarck Boateng, a man who was in the Olympic Games in the 100 metres last year. Thomas Summers, former uh, world finalist at the under-20 level, a real underage star back in 2014 at youth level, around 20.37 for 200 metres. Marcus Lawler, as we said, 2040 here a couple of years ago for his big breakthrough PB, and he has gone to the Olympic Games last year. Around 20.7 there, 20.7 this year so far, but has a lot of 400 running in his legs. Just see Michael Bowler fail there, so he is out of the pole vault competition. That men's 200. We've got Sinisifo Dambile. He is the star on show here in this one. 20.3 two days ago in the show de Fonds, but also world junior bronze medalist, or world under 20 bronze medalist last year, and world under 20 champion in the 4x1 relay at just 20 years of age. He is a superstar in the making and he has a number of 20.3 runs in his legs with that nice little breeze behind him here today we could see something really special Solomon Bakari goes out inside him we saw him in the 100 meters earlier having a great strong finish in that one I think he's he's 20.3 man at his best but 20.6 this year on season's best just get confirmation of that men's long jump result as we see in Jack Roach that's 785 early on to get the win from Zane Branco and the local man Reese Alamora, that's 7.68, so that's a huge jump for him. It was an illegal win, but 
it's certainly well clear of his 740 uh, personal best from Sam Kogali, Shane Howard, Farquharson, Sam Healy and Adrian Ralite in that one. Ian Kerr is uh, next man up in that lane six in the men's 200 metres, the Bahamian. He's ran 20.65 this year in June in uh, Georgia, in the United States, two-time national champion, 26-year-old. Uh, Andy Morgan Harris, the 2020 national champion for Great Britain, goes in lane seven in that second 200 meter race ran 20.68 back in june in finland in espo so he is in the form of his life as well here and mark smith national 200 meter champion for ireland i think he was in the european junior final a couple of years ago as well was the rahini man mark smith 20.91 at his best took down that first national title a couple of weeks ago in morton stadium high jump results here for you emily whelan of Australia 181 Dana Keeley with a big PB there in 181 her first time clear 180 so I think 176 was her PB before this so a really breakthrough performance there from Dana Keeley fantastic jumping from her Pippa Rogan there in third for Ireland 178 Michelle Swatley 175 as was Bernice Coulson disappointed in Maltampe and Holly Mills the multi-eventer from Great Britain with Aoife O'Sullivan down in eighth with 170 so that's a brilliant performance there from Dana Keeley just second on count back but she won't care about that a huge breakthrough and a big PB another Irish woman that's three currently jumping now Dana Keeley along with uh, Summer Leckie there uh, as well as Pippa Rogan are all well clear of 180s now at their best God, this is going to be a really special 200 meters I can feel it already that wind gauge just gave me great hope now after seeing those lads run so well and seeing Leon Reid make that nice big season's best in that previous race I'm really impressed to see what or how he's travelled I suppose depending on the show de fans to, to Ireland and the change in temperature and change in altitude uh, Dambile of South Africa what can he do here can he pull out something special from lane 4 yeah it will be very interesting exactly what happens the Cuban athlete whose name escapes me who clocked 19.6 or he won't be going to the world championships because he'd leave his switching allegiance to Spain perhaps to Portugal 19.63 10th all That's time astonishing runs but can we see something astonishing here from the inside lane 1 Boating lane 2 Summers lane 3 Lawler lane 4 Dembele lane 5 Bukhari lane 6 Kerr lane 7 Morgan Harrison and lane 8 Smith So let's see what the clock will stop at here for these men. How can the Irish do? What can Marcus Lawler and Mark Smith do up against some of the world's best? What can Sinasifo Danbile do? 20.18 is the meet record. He can certainly get close to that if he is at his best. And we are cleanly away. And it is a great start there from Thomas Summers in lane two. He's right up on Marcus Lawler already. And uh, Danbile as well there in the luminous green is flying it away. Has come up to the halfway mark. He is going to be in the lead coming into the home straight. It is Sinisifo Danbile and Solomon Bakari then the white going very, very well as well. But look at Danbile. Look at Marcus Lawler coming through very strongly in the end. There's a little bit of a stumble there from South African, but he's going to take it. 20.57 from Solomon Bakari, or from Ian Kerr rather. And Marcus Lawler coming through there very strongly at the end. We'll just get a look at the replay to see how that one finished up. But looked like a bit of a stumble there coming down the home straight from Sinisifo Danbile, but took the win quite comfortably. 1.8 is the win on the clock. So Marcus Lawler would be hoping that was close to a season's best. Might be just a bit outside it. 20.56 to Ian Kerr's 20.65 unofficially. Mark Smith getting up for third on the outside. He missed me completely. 20.89. That's a big PB for Mark Smith. 20. Well, not a big PB, but a big change in performances from his 200 best this year and last. 20.89 on the clock for Mark. Brilliant stuff there from the Rohini Shamrock. Another club record for him. He was in blistering form over the 100 last year, 10.40. So that is a super performance here. We can see on the replay on the very left of your screen, that is Mark Smith. But the man in the middle was the man to beat. I think he just lost his way a little bit there towards the end. Uh, looked like he had a bit of a stumble there, but came through strongly enough to take the win in the end from Ian Kerr. And Mark Smith, the dark horse there on the outside, completely escaped me. 20.89 PB, unofficially. We'll just wait till that result pops up on our screen. But brilliant runner for the Irish man ahead of some really, really top-class performers. Brilliant race all round, yeah. The arms were certainly flailing there towards the end for our winner, but he got himself over the line. Not quite as dramatic as Sarah Healy, but maybe if we stuck another 20 metres on it, might have been a great win. We'll give you the official times once they're in, in our system. Next up on track, it's going to be the Cork Airport 
women's 400 meters. There is confirmation of re race one in the men's 200 meters. Leon Reed, 20.82, takes the victory. And Aso Jabadwana, 20.88, always good to be the world medalist. And then back in third, Toby Harris of Great Britain, 21.04. And Imagine not far behind in fourth. So action ongoing in the men's pole vault on the infield. See the Dundrum South Dublin athlete just aborting mission there. A bit of acrobatics there. at the five meters. A bit of acrobatics there from Sean Roth. As I said, next up on track, it's an athlete many people will have come here tonight to watch. As popular as any you will find. Fastest Irish woman in history at 100 meters. I don't know, and probably these days for her exploits over 400 meters, it is the Balanin Bullet, Bill Healy. Runs for Bandon AC, she's going to be going in lane four against a strong field. 15 national senior titles she's got in all, counting indoors and outdoors in the various distances. And she looks primed to take victory in front of the home crowd. Yeah, there are some fans that will be here to see Phil Healy. He said, uh, you know, Darren McElhenney, one of the fan favourites, but certainly Phil is going to be somebody who will, has lit up, this tr lit up this track in the past and will do again tonight, I have no doubt. She is a real fan favourite. We said that, we've seen that uh, 200 metre national record set here by Phil a couple of years ago, 20.99. And she has been, I suppose, the trailblazer across all Irish sprint events in the, in the last number of years. She's gone to the European indoors for the 60, for the 400. She's gone to the European outdoors in the 100, the 200, the 400. You know, she is really the Swiss army knife of Irish athletics and we're, she has set the standard and we see, you know, Rashid Adeleke is going to follow in those footsteps now. And it's great to have somebody like Phil to have been there and done that in the past and show you, show the likes of Rashida that you can do it over every distance. You know, the 400 metres is a sprint. You've got to be fast to do it. And certainly uh, the Irish athletics at the minute is, is blessed with uh, sprinters across uh, all those distances on both the female and the male side. Certainly, Phil Healy. Her best this year is 51.82 for 400. She's run 51.50 at her very best last year. Um, is bypassing the world championships in Oregon uh, this month and that is tactical she is targeting the world or sorry the European championships in Munich in August yeah after a big big indoor season I suppose call you know four to or big, big indoor season at the world world indoor championships and then you know relays out in Tokyo as well last year and world indoor champion or European indoor championships last year fourth place you know it's a uh, it's been non-stop for Phil so I think it's uh, probably a wise move now to focus on the championships coming up in, in, in August, those Europeans, try and do something really special out there. She's getting back into so it was a bit of blocker training on races. She had that brilliant race with uh, Sophie Becker at the National Championships um, eight or two weeks ago. Fantastic stuff there. And she's getting back to her best, certainly. And come you know six weeks' time, anything is possible we're certainly going to see her back towards pbs i think she would have been in the pb form without that weather conditions that we had at those national championships too uh men's pole vault is down the home stretch not that they run down the home stretch but it's on the final fling i should say sean roth of dst there in your shot is this, this is his final attempt at five meters victory is sealed that was sealed at 481 his first time clearance but he's had two failures so far at five meters can he get over? Michael Bowler is runner-up with 4.70. Shane Power of St. Joseph third with 4.55. Can this crowd get behind Sean Roth and help him? Really, he has to hoist himself over that bar. It's a long way in the air, Sean Roth. And again, and as soon as that pole planted, he thought, this is not happening. Don't try and hurt yourself. Warm round of applause from the crowd. 481 is best on the night, and that is more than good enough for victory by 11 centimetres. Well done to Dundrum, South Dublin's Sean Roth. Yeah, it takes down the Athletics Ireland. Pole vault here, the BAM Cork City Sports. Sean Roth does it with ease. He's got another about a half a metre to spare over the, the winning height that he cleared. So, comfortable night's work for him, the DSC man via Germany. And now based in the States, training over there with uh, his Bayer Leverkusen man at uh, his hometown club in Germany. And his group over there, there's a whole host of men clear of 550. So he's 
certainly been dragged up to serious heights when he was uh, back home in Germany but now base state side in college and he is uh, showing the best forward with some big performances indoor this year and out I think that uh, shot put, shot put uh, result was corrected is now I'm not sure what was updated on it but we've got Nick Ponzio top of the pile no doubt about that from Andrew Liskowitz and John Kelly with that has national record has still broken the Irish record has still broken that national record one thing we knew tonight it was creeping up all night but it stayed now at 20.16 Thank you. maybe that's what the correction is just to, it's been solidified and it was set at 20.16 Eric Favors 20.11 just behind him his response yeah, and we are counting down as you can see we're minutes away about three minutes away from the start of the women's 400 meters the Cork Airport women's 400 meters where they'll be cleared for takeoff just in terms of that race Phil Healy is about a second clear on terms of personal best Lily Beckford is next best but she's ran that 52-58 this year so we just see Leon Reid there getting a silver medal Sinisifo Dan Bile getting the gold heading to the top of the podium Ian Kerr just got his medal late but Dan Bile takes it down a little bit of you can see the breeze blowing across this singlet now those 400 meter girls won't want to look at the big screen and see that but it looks quite calm down the back straight those flags are not moving so top three in the men's 200 meters where is two and the result on that one in terms of times Dan Bile was 20.56 Ian Kerr 20.65 Mark Smith then Marks. Oh, sorry, he's done on times, of course, across the two races. So, in the, but we have the times confirmed from that uh, race one already. But Mark Smith took down third in that race two with 20.89, and Marcus Lawler was fourth to 20.92, as was Solomon Bakari 20.92, Thomas Summers 21.04, and Bismarck Boateng 21.37. Man who's been here many times before, as he has at the Cork at uh, the Morton Games, loves his uh, trips to Ireland and just back from you know, Tokyo Olympic Games to come here again the first chance he got it's a great testament to those domestic meets in Ireland but how as you said the welcome they get and the performances they can put out uh, it's like nothing else they get in Europe certainly and we're counting down to this Cork Airport women's 400 metres yeah, from the inside we're going to yeah. from the inside we're going to have Natasha Harrison we just got a huge roar there from Phil Healy as she's introduced to the crowd Natasha Harrison goes in in lane one she's set a personal best of 52.87 this year she was fourth in Morton Games at the weekend Karis McCauley 52.86 PB this year Phil Healy as we said 51.50 that is her personal best. She competed in the 200, the 400, and the 4 by mixed 4 by 4 at the Olympic Games last year. First Irish woman or Irish athlete to compete in three events at a uh, Olympic Games, and to do it in the sprints is something special. Lily Beckford, uh, eight in the British National Championships this year. She said 52.58. Cleena Manning, a PB for bronze medal in the National Championships, 53.05 this year. Kendra Chambers, uh, 52.71 at her best. Not quite in that form this year, but she's a two flat 800 meter runner and a 202 this year so certainly going to have the strength to come to home straight and Grania Moynihan on the outside 54.09 a multiple medalist at the Irish National Championships as well this is going to be a really exciting race Carl really one for the Irish crowd and the Cork crowd in particular to really get behind certainly you would imagine if it goes to form Phil Healy sent to your shot there in that black gate number one on her back you would expect she'll be number one and she is certainly number one fan favourite here in Cork. They love her here and she tends to produce good things when she steps on this track in front of her home crowd. I'm sure to be lots of friends, family, relatives in the crowd tonight. So it'll be interesting to see. She is clear the field on personal bests and she prove it on the track. In terms of you know, little between lanes two and three, the two Britons, Natasha Harrison and Carries McCauley, 52.86 and 52.87. Geneva earlier this year, another place that renowned for fast sprint times. But again, it will should take something significantly quicker to trouble Phil Healy, who, as we said, has run 51.50. Can she possibly approach that personal best? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they approach this because a lot of the other women in the field are quite similar on times, Carl, whether they go it hard or easy or try and stick with Phil and hold on. But in terms of uh, Phil is, is much quicker than all of them on season's best and hasn't run them in the most favourable conditions. 
And we are cleanly away here. Let's see how Phil approaches this one. Number one on her back, as you said, she's gone out pretty hard so far up on Lily Beckford already. And coming into the home straight or the back straight, she has eaten up that stagger. Keena Manning going out quite strong as well. She's right up there on Kendra Chambers, but Chambers, as you said, is a fantastic 800 meter runner. Phil Healy looking majestic down the back straight, arms tucked in, just cruising there. Natasha Harrison on the inside is trying to close down on Karis McCauley, but Phil Healy with Kleena Manning are, are streaking away from this field so far. So Kleena Manning has given her a bit of work to do. She's got her in the corner of her right eye. Has come up to 250 mark. 150 to go. Phil Healy does not have it all her own way here at the minute. Kleena Manning, what can she do? Can she come back with her? But Phil Healy, 100 metres to go. Now she's got a 10 metre lead. Coming into the home straight. The crowd are coming out to their feet. Look at Phil Healy go in the all black. Number one on her chest. She is number one. She's going to take this down. What's she going to run? Kleena Manning is sitting in second place. And Phil Healy comes towards the line. She dips and it's 52-07 for Phil Healy. That's going to be a huge piece for Kleena Manning a second behind her and it is number eight Karis McCauley there getting up for third 52.86 her best this year she's going to have to wait on the clock but a brilliant brilliant performance from Phil Healy an exhibition in 400 metre running had it all her own way she worked hard you can see the conditions took their toll on her she's down on her haunches here the crowd rose to their feet to celebrate their hero and another brilliant run from Phil Healy at the Cork City Sports yeah 52.76 has come through provisionally for Kleena Manning so that's about three tenths of her personal best roughly we'll get that made official and um, in second place brilliant run from her as well who went to the olympics last year were part of that mixed 4 by 400 meter team as indeed did phil healy but i think what we saw there jerry from phil healy you know i suppose you expect an athlete like her who has by far the best 100 200 meter speed to utilize that over the first 200 but i think we, she just kept her powder dry a little really and just saved it for the home stretch perhaps running a little bit more conservatively than usual and uh bringing it home stronger than anyone yeah, I think Kleena Manning actually went out a little bit harder than normal as well. As she needs to, to get down to those 52 second times. You know, she's run a, a couple of 53 lows off a conservative starts. And I suppose the lane draw then worked well for both of them because uh, Kleena didn't see Phil come under her shoulder until, you know, 200, 250 into the race. And then for Phil, it may have seemed that uh, Kleena was a little bit further ahead than she was and made her put in a little bit more of a pep in her step with 150 to go to get that gap on Kleena. But... Uh, a brilliant, brilliant run for Phil, as you said. She looked super composed on the back straight. Kind of had it her all, all her own way the whole way home, but um, brilliant performance from her. And I guess the roar from the crowd. There is John Kelly there on the left of your screen. If you didn't know what the man looks like, the new national record holder gets the hug from the medal presenter. 20.16 for the new Irish outdoor record for John Kelly, the man from Finn Valley. And Nick Ponzio, the showman. You'll see him at the World Championships. You'll recognize him straight away. Keep an eye on his career. He is a, a, a growing status in the world of shot put. He certainly likes to put on a show. And he is a real champion. He's taken down the Morton Games. He's taken down the Cork City Sports. And hopefully we'll see him back here to repeat that next year. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the most popular winners of the night here, Phil Healy, 400 metres for women, sponsored by Cork Airport. Uh, Phil, talk us through the race. Uh, very impressive run by you. Yeah, I know I was very happy with that race. It is very windy down the back straight, so I had different things to work on today. I think I work, like nailed them. But uh, no, to come back to Cork, it's always my favourite meet of the year. We had a slow start this season because... Europeans is the main aim and that's still seven weeks away but I always made sure that Cork was on the diary to race so no better place to come back the crowd is unreal the performances are unreal tonight it's a credit to the organisers to have such a great meet and I hope it continues every year just like this and that the crowd continues to come out and support You've been here year after year it's never easy to win in Cork is it? Absolutely not I actually think this is my first win so uh, it's really good like 2018 I came here, broke the national record, 2019 I had the season's best, it always brings out the best to me, but it's great to come home from Cork and maybe because it's Cork. <laughs> and the wait was uh, worth it as well because uh, the atmosphere and the support is here tonight have been magnificent. Absolutely, like coming right down the back straight along the bend, that crowd really carried me home and it's super for all athletes, there's been PBs, there's national records here tonight and they're here for a reason because it's a great meet, it's a great atmosphere and we have world class fields and the Irish are coming out performing to the top so it's great, great to see.
Let you get your presentation. Thanks for all this, Phil. Phil Healy, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Phil Thank giving you. her sorry due due respects to the crowd here. She said cheered her on. She's dead right. The wind really did pick up before that race. You could see it blowing on the on the vests of the lads getting their hundred meter presentations as before. So the last thing those athletes would have wanted to see. Uh, but what a performance! Fifty two zero seven unofficially for Tina Manning there in that women's four hundred meters. Let's see if we can get the official result loaded up here. Fifty two zero six. It is corrected to from Tina Manning. Fifty two seventy six. We just see that. Uh, race one again as we said uh, mark smith around 20.89 in race two but uh slower than leon reed and nasa jabaduana so reed was on the podium in third spot for that one great stuff all around it is cool here temperatures are quickly dropping but thankfully so is the wind although phil healy did say quite a strong wind there down that back straight so i'm sure that the milers in our final race of the evening that's coming up in about three to four minutes time do not go anywhere because this could be a cracker, especially if it's anything like we experienced at the Morton Games the other night. There is a race two confirmation of times 20.56 for Dambile, Ian Kerr, 20.65. And like I said, Mark Smith, 20.89. Mark Slaughter, 20.92 alongside Solomon Bakari. Great stuff all around from our men's 200 meter runners in the BAM Ireland sponsored race. We've got a men's pole vault presentation ongoing at the moment and that was Shane Power of St. Joseph's AC 455 takes the bronze Michael Bowler of Enniscorthy gets silver with 470 and gold that's the Dundrum South Dublin AC athlete Sean Roth with 481 in the Athletics Ireland men's pole vault it's been a wonderful evening of action once again here at the BAM Cork Sea Sports so good to be back in action after a couple of years away at this wonderful, wonderful meeting, the 69th edition. There's confirmation of that full result in the Athletics Ireland men's pole vault. And then there was one, and that one race, Jer, is going to be the Johnson Controls one mile for men. And this could be something special. Yeah, like you said, it's great to see all the, the fans back out. It's always, always a well-supported meet down here in Cork, but you know, after a couple of years of a break, great that everybody has seen the opportunity to get back out on trackside and support uh, this meet down at Cork City Sports. You see that lineup for that men's mile, call From the inside there, Hungary's Istvan Zogi. He is a five-time national champion, a 338 1500-meter runner. Don't think he's ever run the mile. Not so big in Budapest, I believe, the mile. Um... Beside him, Italy's Mohad Abdi Kadar is a non-starter, so we'll just wipe his name off the list. All my research went to waste. Devastated. Um, Rory Hunter of Australia beside him. Henry McLucky, a very good newcomer from Britain, 20-year-old. Big, big talent. Already gone below four minutes for the mile. Johnny Davies of Britain had some bad luck at the Morton Games the other night, fell over. But he is a sub-four-minute miler as well. As is Callum Davies of Australia, who's run 3.58 the other night at the Morton Games to finish to finish fifth can he go below four again I think so Garrett O'Toole from USA a 401 miler at his best but misfortune again at the Morton Games ran into the back of Paul Robinson fell over race ended in an instant but if there's any upside he might be fresh tonight Cahill Doyle of course of Ireland Irish fans he'll need no introduction he is the national 1500 metre champion running with a broken wrist and a fractured elbow at the moment but running very well at 357.1 mile to finish second in the Morton Mile the other night and then completing the lineup from Denmark Andreas Lindgren two time national champion has run 341 for 1500 this as far as we know will be his mile debut but a 341 converts to about a 358 mile and then the pacemakers Juan Ignacio Pena the Chilean they'll be running in the colours of the Dublin Track Club and then Mitchell Byrne of Ireland as we see the presentations just rounding out there yeah, for Chris, that women's Karis 200 Macaulay, meters sorry Carl Carris McCauley Cleena Manning and Phil Healy getting a huge roar from the local Cork crowd here for their hometown heroine Phil Healy so much smaller field here called than we saw in the Morton Games hopefully that means we'll keep every man on his feet everyone will get a chance to run some quick times here 
Yeah, I think so. I think the, the athletes will be quite pleased about that. There's two pacemakers then just looking across. There are eight athletes. Um, so ten in total, plenty space on the eight-lane track. We hopefully will have no fallers. We've seen misfortune tonight in the women's 800 metres. We saw it the other night at the Morton Games. Hopefully all these athletes can navigate a safe passage around these four laps. And will we see more magic? More than 50 men have already broken four minutes four minutes for the mile from Ireland outdoors and Cahill Doyle became one of them just last Saturday night at 357.11 he came from behind he was out in lane three off the last bend swinging out into lane four by the finish going to the line he headed Andrew Coskrin but with the Superman dive Andrew Coskrin beat him to the line by two hundredths of a second Coskrin is not here tonight he's flown off to Oregon for the world championships Cahill Doyle will not be going to Oregon he might be going to the European Championships he has a chance here perhaps to lay down a marker and if he can find a couple of races in the weeks ahead he could yet earn a spot at the European Championships couple Doyle towards the left gear shot there number 12 in the black and amber colours that are going well in other sporting arenas these days Cahill Doyle is carrying them with pride but from the inside that is Istvan Sogi of Hungary beside him is Rory Hunter of Australia then it's Henry McLucky of Britain Johnny Davies of Britain Callum Davies of Australia Gerard O'Toole of USA Cahill Doyle representing Ireland and then Andreas Lindgren of Denmark and our two pacemaker or sorry our one pacemaker one Ignacio Pena looks like Mitchell Byrne is racing there is already out to the front I was thinking that myself I thought Mitchell Byrne might be in here as a pacemaker but he's pacing from the back if so um, one Ignacio Pena there just setting the pace out down the back straight and he's got uh, Johnny Davis slotting in behind him and Callum Davis who did a lot of the work at Morton Games on Saturday as well did Callum Davis but run out of it in the end and they are nicely strung out here already the pace is thick and fast what well, Ignacio Pena doing a great job there out front in that DTC singlet absolutely that is Johnny Davies slotting in behind him as you said misfortune the other night but he'll be looking to get round the full mile here tonight and he was a gold medalist for Britain as part of the cross country relay in Lisbon back in 2019 so he knows how to run well at the championship he passed through 400 metres in 57 just under 57 seconds probably by the time they hit the finish line there it was about 58 so it looks like a perfectly set up once again a brilliant job done by Juan Ignacio Pena the Chilean native as they round here and it is Callum Davies in second and then it is the Australian I'm um, sorry Johnny Davies in second and Callum Davies of Australia back in third I think that's uh, Isfan Soga is sitting in fourth so they are the top three in the race as it is with the Irishman the 1500 meter champion second place at the Morton Games Cahill Doyle tall man from Clannifier is just slotting in there so as you said running it with an already broken wrist and elbow before that uh, mile at the weekend luckily he wasn't the one that hit the deck but he's going to be hoping for something fast here again tonight took four or five seconds off his PB just two days ago in the morning or three days ago in the Morton Games what can he do here this evening can he get up and get it it's an Irish win but it looks like Johnny Davies is still leading the charge there for Callum Davies and Isman Sogai and Juan Ignacio Peña comes through 158 on the clock but 150 8 high to 159 for the field yeah and keep an eye on Henry McLucky there as well he's just at running the most out outer athlete there and the outer side of lane 1 he's number 7 in that white thing that he's a very talented very gifted athlete the Shaftesbury Barnet Harrier he's 20 years old he was bronze medalist at the European under 20 championships last year and he is a very gifted athlete he ran a 359 mile in London back in May the youngster there in that white vest he's now in 5th place he's just moving up and beside him Rory Hunter moving up as well Rory Hunter was 7th at the Morton Games the other night a 357 miler yeah and Peña just steps off the track so the pacemaker is gone Callum Davies takes over the lead and as you said Henry McClucky there slots in gets himself in a much better position from Isfan Sogay there beside him and Rory Hunter of Australia so all change up front uh, Johnny Davies just slotting back down into the field but Callum Davies as he did at the Morton Games leading the charge now taking over as de facto pacemaking duties but he's going to want to finish a lot higher up and Cahill Doyle now just playing close attention as well trying to get up there with those four men in front of him they get the bell in 2.59 three minutes what can they close in here Cahill Doyle just looks to be lagging a little bit off the pack and out front Callum Davies still leading the charge with McLucky just sitting on his shoulder poised ready to pounce is he going to go Cahill? He looks ready to roll, and McLucky is definitely a kicker, but we saw Callum Davies the other night at the Morton Games can certainly come home strong as well, and look out for Sogai as well. Sogai is a 336-1500 metre runner there. He's in third at the moment. He's run 338 twice already this year. He can close as well, but can anyone get past Callum Davies? Look out for Rory Hunter coming up the outside there as well. Five once again in contention with 150 to go, and as it was the other night, out into lane two or three to lane of high hopes, the Irishman Cole. 
Donald Doyle hoping to launch that big kick that he has, but it's Callum Davies leading. Here comes Cahill Doyle to raise the roof for the home crowd. Cahill Doyle sprinting for the line. He's going to be well under four, but more importantly, he's going to be a champion at the BAM Cork City Sports. Cahill Doyle at 356.35 mile. It's a big personal best for the Irishman, the 24-year-old Clonliff athlete. He got it right tonight and there was no dive needed for the finish. Cahill Doyle is the champ. Absolutely, I rode him off at 3.50 to go. He looked like he was suffering, but he was just biding his time and unleashed that kick there at 120 to go. And what a payback it is for himself to come back off the bounce. The revelation of a national championship, then devastation just a couple of days ago at his hometown meet to just miss out on the title. 3.56.35 on the clock. He is the champ here at the BAM Cork City Sports over the mile and another big PB. A great return to form. Yeah, and as you said, four minutes flat or 3.59 high. Cahill Doyle was definitely outside four minutes with the bell. So he has come home in about, what are we talking, a 55, 55, 56 yeah, probably. Definitely. He is a big kicker and Cahill Doyle is the kind of athlete who just quietly, he's been doing his thing there over the University of Portland for the past two years now and probably unbeknownst to a lot of the Irish audiences just how much this young man has improved but it, everyone has got to know him over the past four or five days in Irish athletics and what he has proven at the national championships at the Morton Games the other night and here at the BAM Cork City Sports is that he has championship credentials and if you're sitting down if this man could find a few more good races he is one of the first men you would want in an Irish best at a championship because Cahill Doyle has shown Whatever about personal bests, once he gets on the line in that competition, I'm sure the NCAA system has helped that he can race. Absolutely. Cahill Doyle, uh, super, super stuff. Uh, describe uh, that performance for us here in front of the uh, Cork uh, crowd tonight. Yeah, after uh, after that loss in uh, Morton Games, uh, I was like determined really to come out and get the win this time. That one, uh, that hurt a little bit, so I wanted to make sure I get my win and put the home crowds up on both of them. Was that the tactic to come from the back and uh, some finish from you? Yeah, I um, actually felt surprisingly okay, even if I wasn't in back. But um, I was confident in my last 100. I said I'd wait till 100 this time. Uh, so happy about the, the last 100. That makes up from the narrow loss, doesn't it, in the Martin? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, I think I had to come and win. If I didn't win, I would have been disappointed. So it wasn't with it, I think that was BB as well. So. You're racing with a, a kind of a broken hand as well, are you? Uh, yeah, you should tape it up and be grand. <laughs> you, you enjoy this side, obviously, and uh, the su super atmosphere here. Yeah, definitely. It's always great atmosphere. This is my second time running. Uh, I was a lot further down the field two years ago or three years ago, so nice to get the win. Well done, Kyle. Congratulations. I think we have the quote of the night from Cahill Doyle. Possibly the quote of the year, maybe even the century. Just tape it up, it'll be grand. Yeah, tape it up and get around. 356.35, Isfan Sogay, 356.72, Callum Davies on the podium, 356.99. We see Phil Healy's official result there for the women's 400, sponsored by Cork Airport. Tina Manning with a big PB in second place, 52.76. Irish women's 400 meter running is absolutely on fire. That's, I think, the fifth sub-53 from a, a different Irish woman this year so far. So it's a, a rich man of form. Harris McCauley, 53.78 in fourth, third place. With, uh, Callum Davies 356.99 for third in that mile. And Henry McLucky uh, 357.89. Rory Hunter 357.94. So the first five men well, well under the four minute mark. Yeah, it's been once again a special evening at what is and what continues to be a very special event. The BAM Cork City Sports, as strong, as brilliant, and as captivating as ever. Now in its 69th edition, and we'll. We'll bring you this presentation. We'll watch Cahill Doyle climb atop the podium, something he didn't get to do the other night at the Morton Games, but he's going to do it, the, the Dubliner, down here in Cork. He's actually living in Mead now, technically, but I asked him, Should, do we call you a Dubliner or a Mead man? He said, oh, a Dubliner. Always and only a Dubliner. He's very um, particular about that, and rightly so. He'd probably be happier to take the win at the real capital, though, in fairness, uh, rather, than his, exactly. rather than on his home track. In we'll call stadium. him an adopted Cork man and see how he likes that. Absolutely, there is sir. the adopted rebel, Carl Doyle, atop the podium. The Clonliffe Harry here. Rebel with the cause, Carl As Doyle. Said, you can see that right scaphoid is currently broken, and he also has a fracture in his elbow. He saw a consultant during the week, and they wanted to cast it, and he said, I've got a season to run, I'm not putting my arm in a cast. 
it's healing slowly. <laughs> Hope there'll be no ill effects. But Who cares about never being able to play golf for the rest of his life? He's now a 356 miler. He did say the worst part is the post-race handshakes. He said they're quite sore, um, and he'll be getting a lot of them tonight. And he got a lot of pats on the back the other night at the Morton Games. His club mates aren't here in, in such numbers, but he has brought the fire down that home stretch. What a kick it was. What a race it was. And it will wrap up that full result. There we go. Cahill Doyle, 356.35. It's a personal best by more than a second. Um, Istvan Zogi of Hungary in second, 356.72. And Callum Davies once again on the podium, 356.99. Good lucrative trip to Ireland for the Australian. I'm sure he's fallen in love with the people and the meeting, and I'm sure Mr. Davies will be back again before long, the 22-year-old. Sure, it's been a wonderful evening and just looking back on some of the performances from Sarah Lavin and that wonderful stadium record from Jade Barber to Dara McElhenney's Irish under-23 record, Sarah Healy's Irish under-23 record, Nick Griggs' Irish under-20 record. We've had so many brilliant performances and then so many international stars rising to the occasion as well. Mm, absolutely, Joe. You know, I almost forgot about Sarah Lavin's huge BB performance, such as all the, the records we've seen and the, and the stars on show uh, since then. It's not been a, a long program by any means, but yeah, Sarah Lavin, a huge, huge run there. And like, it's just such a boost for her going into the World Championships now in a week or two's time. You know, Israel Olatunde, star of the men's side of Irish sprinting, just beating everybody that was put out in front of him, a host of huge stars, the sub-10 second runners, 10-1 guys. Um, you know, it's the only bright things to come for him. That men's shot put, utterly ridiculous in terms of men's field events. It's the best we've ever seen from a men's field event, I'd say, uh, certainly in the throws. Two men clear of the old Irish record, two men clear 20 metres in the same competition. It's completely new ground being broken. And that's the kind of thing that just spurs uh, these athletes on to huge, huge things. You never know where that can end. Uh, and like you said, like the middle distance events, always in Ireland, are really sometimes steal the show but at least we've got sprinters hurdlers shop putters pole vaulters all doing the business here and the local lads like Reese Adamola Sam Healy Shane Howard dominating the long jump as well and what a way it was to sign off with two Irish victories from Phil Healy the hometown hero to the transplanted Dubliner coming on down here and avenging his defeat in the Morton Games the other night and taking victory at the Cork City Sports this World Athletics Continental Tour bronze meet and how lovely was it to see those shots of all the athletes cooling down after the finish and all the kids now flooding out on track getting their autographs getting their selfies they're all going to go away with lots of great memories of tonight and most importantly a whole heap of inspiration from the future it's been a wonderful evening here at the bam cork city sports it's been so good to watch international athletics on this continental tour bronze meet here on irish soil so from me cahal dennehy and from my colleague Jura donnell we wish you all the best thank you for joining us over the last few hours and we'll see you next year see you next year